Alright guys, the first game in the challenge between Bifumito and Rise of the Witch King is all about to begin. And on the bottom right side we have the blue man of the west player Sauron. His ally at the bottom left is the green Engma player Imperialist, the traitor. <laughs> at the top left side we have another green player Mephis Mirx. And his ally at the top right side is the yellow Engma player Irby. The game number one in the best of seven. Hmm, this map is kind of feels, feels a bit more zoomed in for me. But maybe it's just me. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what do you think about this as a 2v2 map? Hmm, I don't know. I, I no, I'm not, I'm not casting so many 2v2 games, to be honest. So, and when I cast them, it's more like Udun and Anorian 2 kind of thing, you know? And that's the first time I see this map, by the way. I've never seen this map before. Yeah, so I think maybe one of the big things to mention about this map is that um, you know, it's not top against bottom, it's not left against right. Um, all of the players are equidistant apart and, um, you know, it's like a square. So that really affects how easy it is to teamwork and where should you be attacking as well? Because it's not obvious, um, you know, where you should be going. Uh, there's this um, kind of area in the middle as well with the four pathways. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can be blindsided by the big rocks, which kind of cut you off from your ally. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, there are also no uh, structures you can actually capture. We have some war creeps. I see four war players on this map, but that's pretty much it. And yeah, let's see. I mean, at the beginning of the game, it's going to be most likely like right against right and left against left. So what do you think about the, about the matchup and the right, at the right side? It's man of the West against Engmar. Um, um, yeah, so I mean, we're going to get to see Irby's Angmar, which is really exciting. Um, Men of the West, it looks like it's going for a, a four farm start. Um, sometimes players get their archery range um, when they're on three farms, but Sauron opting for four. So we'll see if that um, means Irby gets a unit advantage um, or something like that in this game. Um, Irby is going for the D now, so we're going to get some Wolf Riders, Wolf Packs. You love to see it, don't you? Double dog? <laughs> yeah, double dog. Okay, Warcham was used from RB into the Wolf Riders. Beautiful trample here, should be able to defend. Yeah, that's a pretty easy defense from Irby, I have to say. And then um, he can even go for a push, you know? Yeah, maybe maybe it's better so you can kill them a bit faster. And then now he can just go forward. There is no more buff available for the Man of the West player. And he has yeah. Pikeman coming though, I mean... But he might lose one of those farms. That's what I was saying, you know, I mean, he, he went for the fourth farm. Um, it means that he hasn't got a lot of troops at home. Um, so we could see uh, Irby taking advantage of that. I say that and then uh, Wolf Riders run straight into the pikes. So. <laughs> oh no, oh, I didn't watch that. I was just watching Imperialist trampling those arches from the Alvin player Mephis. At the top got left it, side. Oh yeah, what's happening on the left? Is uh, Imperialist crushing right now? Yeah, he's putting in some nice work though. And he is pretty much untouched during this time. He has pretty much the same strike just like Irby does. And Angmar so, players are dominating this game so far. One thing I will say is that Angmar against Elves, um, the top players seem to favor this matchup for Angmar. It's one of the few factions that people are picking into Elves um, as like a viable counter pick. So we'll see if Imperialist can actually make the most of that um, on this map where, you know, Irby's going to be a little bit cut off from his ally. Yeah, especially because of the map, right? So it's, I think it's really difficult to send some help to your ally because the enemy at the bottom left side is quite far away. All right, now, but Imperialist is sending actually help to his ally with the Wolf Riders, trampling down, down those Gandabad warriors from Irby. And Mephi is going for a push now. We have two pikemen and two archers. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. Rallying Cole was used before, so it's not going to be available for this fight. And Man of the West player is just spamming more and more soldiers, pikemen and archers. Going now also for the stables. Okay, so I don't mind the stable choice. I think it's okay. I know that we've already got cavalry coming out of Imperialist on Angmar. Um, but I think that Men of the West getting cavalry into Angmar is a, a nice choice. Um, you really want to get some cav against Angmar, um, otherwise you'll be abused by the double dog strategy, um, and you want to be able to keep Angmar's expansion down at the same time. So uh, I quite like that choice. Um, we're seeing a big double as well from Imperialist coming over. True. 
And that might actually hurt because Erby doesn't have that many units remaining on the field anymore. Is that he will come to the stream beefing me too? He's already small in the scoreboard. Yeah, maybe, you know? That's a sign. Hisoka, my man. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Right, the pikemen from Erby were able to take down one of those farms. The wolf riders and wolf packs are taking down those arches from Sauron. And Imperialist and Sauron are grouping in front of uh, the base from Erby. Oh, that might be actually Cl Clown Fiesta right there. Erby can defend that solo. But at the same time, uh, Mephi is putting pressure on Imperialist. But however, this army, again, is not going to be very effective to take down those structures. Unlike this army here from Imperialist and Sauron. They might get the Hall of King's men, you know, um, and that could be huge. Uh, Irby's trying to rebuild a second one, but he's not going to be able to build any thralls for a while, which could be uh, a massive answer. German Pony 08 traded my stream with six viewers. Thank you for the rate, man. Appreciate it with six viewers. I hope you had a great stream. Welcome. Welcome to the challenge of BFME 2 against Rise of the Witch King Boys. That's the game number one in the best of seven challenge. Uh, we have Men of the West and. Engma for BFME 2 against Engma and Elves for Rise of the Witch King in the first game. And yeah, this is looking very good actually for BFME 2 team. They were able it's to take down... It's looking great for them. <laughs> yeah, it's looking great BFME for them. BFME 2 team are having a great start. They're all, of, they're all over Erby. I mean, if I was ever in their position, you know, I'd be saying double Erby, double Erby, you know, just because yeah. he's one of the very, very best players right now and he's in form. Um, but uh, we'll have to see how Matty can help out his ally. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's looking pretty good for beer for me too. I'm biased, but they're looking like they're taking down another Hall of Kingsmen shanks. Yeah, I mean, Irby has... Uh, wait a second. Irby has power points for Snowbind, so he could delay that. But besides delaying... I mean, he's also putting in some nice work with those Wolf Riders now and taking down so many extra words from Imperialist. But the thing is, Irby doesn't have much left anymore. 350 command points only. Um, he has, yeah, I mean, he has not enough resource income right now. He can't make more Wolf Riders because he lost to Dean. Uh, at the very yeah. same time, you know, Gondor Knights are getting taken down here. Now he was able to survive with one of them. And yeah, that's what I said, you know. Mephi's army is good against army, but it's, you know, look how much damage he was, how much little damage he was able to deal during all this time. Because when you double army one is... player, yeah, yeah, in a 2v2, if you double one player, you rely on the other player in your team to carry. And that's exactly what's going to have to happen here. We're going to have to see Maddie's Mercs carrying Irby. Um, so, uh, yeah, this could be, <laughs> this could be, a, it could go any way, Shanks. Like, I have no idea how this is going to turn out because, you know, we've even got the counter pick against Matty in this game with uh, Imperialist on Angmar. So... Um, yeah, I have no idea which way this is going to go, but BFME 2 players have had a great start to this game, which, you know, by all accounts, they shouldn't have, because we should be seeing Rise of the Witch King players having the better start in every single game, because they should know the strategies, the tactics, the build orders. Um, BFME 2 guys are not going to be as familiar with the build orders, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's why I'm so surprised to see them actually make it to mid-game, it looks like, with a lead, uh, but can they convert? Imperialist has big bad, uh, big bad wolf army, yes, that's true. <laughs> and he's going for a push. Look how many wolf packs he has right there on the field. But they can't really face against those archers just yet. There is a Glorfindel house, however, from uh, Mephis, trying to protect Irby. Uh, there is even a tower here from Sauron, just you know, protecting this giant's pathway. And Irby is kind of out of the game right now. He needs time to scale. There is a Mirror of Galadriel coming up for Irby from his ally. And yeah, he was even forced to make some defensive expansions here. Trollstone Throwers. Oh yeah, it's going down on the top in Matty's base as well. Yeah. Um, Glorfindel using Blade of Purity. Um, and uh, will he be able to hold it off? This is a huge army from Imperialist and he rally called it all. Ooh, Felvin was used from Irby. Oh wow, oh, did you see but that? But Glorfindel is MVP <laughs> there. Oh my god, this guy is... You don't want to fight against him, by the way, boys, when he has the Blade of Purity active. He's sitting like a troll, I guess you know. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is hitting like a truck, and the Well's going to be there to help heal him up quickly for the next fight. Um, wow, that couldn't have gone better for Matty Smirks. Yeah, that's true. I mean, um, yeah, if I had to bet now my money, I would say uh, I would bet on the Man of the West and Engmar team at the bot side. 
from BFME 2. I am not too much surprised about the performance of the Angma player Imperialis. Again, you know, this guy spams a lot of Rise of the Witch King games as well. But to be fair, they are mostly 1v1, so he doesn't play 2v2s that quite often. But they want to make BFME 2 proud, you know? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I've got to be biased, Janks. I've got to say, you know, the Northern team are still going to win, Erby and Matty. But it's not looking good for them. There's already some trebuchets coming out from Sauron. Um, they're about to siege up on Erby's base. And so there's definitely a timer now placed on this game. Um, you know, they need to be able to take out this trebuchet because otherwise it's going to slowly whittle down the fortress. Um, and then, uh, yeah, they'll be in trouble. But I still think that Erby and Matty can hold off and uh, play a good game of this. Okay, Erby was using Warchan at the bottom left side offensively, taking down this level 2 farm. Rangers are getting trampled down from the Wolf Riders, which is really good. Um, but at the very same time, he's getting siege, guys. Trebuchet, there is a tower in the back with Rangers inside, but Blurfindel is here from Matthews, and he will be able to take down this Trebuchet. Imperialist is pinging. And oh, he, there, yeah, are no there are no pikemen around. There are no pikemen around. He's trying to slow him down with the soldiers. The rangers are putting in some nice work. Oh, actually retreat. saves the trebuchet. Okay. Yeah. So, it was good. Um, it was good. Not even close, baby. <laughs> not even close, baby. And look at this. I mean, they can't really approach to this tower here from Sauron. There are rangers inside. And also, uh, Imperialist is making another tower right there. Lord of the Rings in the two towers, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's Baradur, isn't it? Um, and uh, Orthanc, isn't it? The two towers from yeah. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, and they're going to be facing off now. Um, during all of that, um, Imperialist was able to take down Erby's builders. So Erby with no builders right now. Oh, no. Um, I think he had to rebuild uh, one of his builders. Um, so yeah, he was able to take that down. Uh, pretty nice pick off. Two trebuchets now, Shanks. What do you think? Um, I think they can approach them. They can approach them because there, is, there are now two towers, and in one oh, of them is oh, that was a arrow huge volley and... <laughs> arrow volley. Oh, who Bell is down? It's down. An arrow volley. Let's go. <laughs> oh, they are running into the own fire. By the way, that's not what you want. And I think that's gonna be. Are we getting defeated now? I don't see them, you know, coming back from the situation anymore, guys. Oh my Two trebuchets, goodness. a massive army. The trebuchets are being in a safe spot because of those two towers. Glorfindel is quite low, can't really approach. And the siege on the fortress has begun. Erby has just used Snowbind. Yeah, so they've got that one trick to try and stall and save the fortress, but... Shanks, I don't know if they can actually come back into this game. Erby's not a quitter, but uh, it's going to be hard. Um, the only thing they've got going for them is the level 5 Glorfindel right now, and he's oh. nowhere near being able to uh, take out these trebuchets. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how they're going to hold this off. And yeah, Mephi has heal not available, it's on cooldown. And Glorfindel is quite slow. So I don't see him, you know, being able to get to the backline and take down those trebuchets any soon. And the Snowbind is now gone, so they can, you know, start hitting the fortress again from a safe distance. We offer mm, from and Orion. I they gotta be honest got with you. Left, Shanks. <laughs> I gotta be honest with There's you. The, no teamwork, the, team, the teamwork from BFME 2 guys were, was just better, you know, in this game. I mean, it's not over until it's over, Shanks, but it's looking really good for BFME 2 right now in this game 1. Um, they played the map better, I have to say. Big double from Imperialist halfway through the match. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks like the last stand is coming up right now. Yeah, but there are three trebuchets. There is no way. White special summon. We will have from Imp. And yeah, like again, you know, he will be able to take down one trebuchet, maybe even two. Long shot is in arrow volley is incoming once again, this time from oh, Wow, the arrow volley gets both trebuchets as well. From Imperialist. Um, but the fortress oh, is but gone. Oh, but calling it GG. Uh, oh, okay, right. 1-0 to beer for me too. Let's go. <laughs> oh nice. Um I did not expect that. Shanks, you'll have to update the scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, I need I need wow. to do that. But for the next game, Imperialist now will get replaced by Ectadion. And this is actually good for the Rise of the Witch King team. Because, you know, Ectelion doesn't have as much knowledge about Rise of the Witch King as Imperialist does. 
Uh, so I think that's gonna be now a bit more challenging for BFME2 to win also the next game with Sauron and Ectidion. Okay, so we'll go back to Game Ranger, will we? Yes. All right, game number two, this time on Anorian 2, by the, by the way, boys. We have Engmar and Man of the West for BFME 2 team against Isengard against Elves from Rise of the Witch King team. And yeah, once again, Imperial is countering the Elves with his Engmar faction. He did a really great job in the previous game. And at the top left side, we have the blue Elven player, Mephis. His ally is the green Isengard player, Erbi. They are against the Man of the West player at the bottom right side, Sauron. And his ally, once again, is the Engmar player, Imperialist, at the bottom left side. Anorian 2, this is a bit more, you know... In this map, I, I'm expecting Erbi and Mephi to be a bit more teamwork-based. Because that was the problem, I think, in the game number one. As both players were focusing on Erbi, Erbi couldn't handle them in a 2v2, 2v1 situation. And the help from Mephi was there, but it was really late. It was too late, and uh, I agree with you, Shanks, completely. Um, already what we're seeing is a stables coming down from Matty Smirk, um, which means that Erby and Matty have to work together, because as soon as Pikes land in Matty's base, um, you know, it's going to be Erby who has to be there to help defend, and then uh, at the same time, um, you know, Matty with his cavalry can run all over the map. All right, we wanna, we're going to have our stable set also for the Man of the West player, by the way, Sauron. At the bottom right side, Erby starting with the Uruk pits, nothing too crazy, and we have the all of the Kingsmen up on the field for Imperialists. I mean, Imperialists Sauron? might not expect that, right, with the with the stable, so I oh. think he's going to get them into the yeah. Gandabad Warriors first. Absolutely, you you very rarely uh, go cavalry into Angmar. Um, I mean, you need them in the mid game, but to actually start is a risk because you can get the pikes very early with a thrall. And a lot of people will creep this war glare, which is between the players um, early. But it doesn't look like um, Imperialist is going to do that. Uh, one thing I'll say is that Sauron's cavalry are going to be slightly later than Matty's cavalry because he went for a third farm, uh, whereas Matty still sitting on two farms and going for the stable delete. Yeah. Um, so it looks like Sauron on the Men of the West player, um, he's going to keep his stables, uh, whereas Matty has deleted his stables. Okay, the Gundabats are going to be taken down here from the Lancers. And now it's going to be very important for the Elven player Mephi to keep those Lancers alive. Since this is a stable delete, um, if you lose them, you won't have any calf in on the field anymore. Uh, Kree being used from the Isengard player Erby, by the way. And Rallying and Cole was used now. That's teamwork, by the way. Mephi and... Oh, never mind. Rallying and Cole was also used from the Man of the West player. Okay. So but they're doubling is... Sauron yeah. this time. Um, but it looks like he should be able to hold this. Do you think he'll lose that far? Yeah, probably, yeah. But I don't know. Maybe not. Because the build is kind of blocking. And the lances from Gonzo are a bit stronger, I would say. They are. And uh, Matty, because he went for the stable delete on elves, um, he's he's not going to he's gonna have to use a well to revive those cavalry. So he's not going to have any cavalry for a while now. I uh, don't think that's worth at all for Erby and Matty. Uh, again, the early game going to BFME 2. Again, and oh, look at this. I mean, he was not even able to take down those Gandabad warriors. So they will be recovering up our time with the Trollmaster being alive. Which is really good. And they were not able to take down this farm. Even though they used the debuff from Isengard and the buff from Elven Faction. So the Elves, they need to make a well to heal up those Lancers. They are quite slow. And with that yeah, 4 and units remaining, they, they won't be able to deal damage. Imperialist has still got his war chance, so we could see a big attack coming in now. Yeah. And do you think they'll go for Erby again? They're gonna go <laughs> it for looks Irby like again. they're heading that way. <laughs> Maybe take the stronger player out first. <laughs> Maybe that's the tactic, you know? <laughs> Just attack Erby and everything will be fine. <laughs> and I'm expecting now Mephi actually sending some reinforcements. That's gonna be really necessary because there is no buff and no debuff available right now for the Rise of the Witch King team. Um, and we have Volpex, they're gonna try to take down those pikemen here. Never mind. There's I mean, that so would be many the different plan, units right? banked on the field. Every single player picking every single unit that they can. Um, you know, everyone's got one pike, they've got one archer, they've got one swordman, you know. Yeah. Uh, there's wolf riders, there's dire wolves, uh, everything's happening. You are, you are just describing the, the definition of fiesta. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. The work um, a bit is up on the fields for Irby. 
He lost one of those furnaces, and yeah, the, you know, he's under pressure all the time. And during all, all this time, Imperialist but also Sauron are untouched. Yeah, they're expanding freely, and I think the one thing about BFME 2 uh, is that these guys know how to expand. Um, the expansion in BFME 2 is uh, a lot faster than in Rise of the Witch King, and um, that's because the economics of the game is very slightly different. You don't get penalized as much in BFME 2 for expanding, uh, whereas in Rise of the Witch King, your farms will earn less and less uh, for each farm every time you build a new one. Um, so, uh, But when you have a lead, it's good to expand quickly. So uh, I think this could actually help the BFME 2 guys again. Um, Erby playing defense. Um, Holy oh, moly, Shanks. It's looking really good for BFME 2 again. True, true. Profile, by the way, and Minor96. Thank you guys so much for the follows. Appreciate it. Hope you guys gonna enjoy your stays. And yeah, the pressure is real, boys. Man of the West player is again, alongside with, you know, the Engma player, Imperialist. They are all over to take down Erby, like in the previous game. Rallying call was used. Kribain will be used now from Eisenkatz player Erby. We have some work packs now on the field, though. There are no heroes on the field just yet. And it looks like uh, Mephi is going to try to surround. Coming from the back line with two archers. Will this be enough to defend? I think so, because they are also being debuffed right now. Ooh, they but be the able crossbow, man. They are, not in, you know, they are not in position. The wolf riders, they are dealing so much damage. It's very cagey, isn't it? On the other side... Um... The Rise of the Witch King team were able to take down one of the original farms from Sauron, uh, who's playing Men of the West. So yep. uh, maybe a very small win there for the Northern team that helps them get back into this game because, quite frankly, you know, they're on the defense there. All right, now they can actually go for a counter push maybe. Uh, but now we have some Rangers on the field from Sauron. And there are no calf units on the field anymore. I don't see the Lancers from the Elven player. Are they healing up? No, I don't see them. Are they dead? I think so. Yeah, I think he lost the Revendal Lancers. Taking a fight here I... might not be what you want. As Isengard and Elven team. Okay. Warchan was used now from Imperialist. And maybe Isengard and the Elven team, they need to disengage. Because their buff is gonna run off soon. Yeah. Um, we'll have to see if Imperialist can take over this game again. Um... Because, uh, you know, he's just picked up the Fell Wind. Um, and, uh, yeah, if he can actually take control. He's not been touched. He hasn't lost any of his um, okay, mills. Calvin was used. Beautiful. And the Rangers are putting in some nice work. They are level 2 now. I mean, I was expecting the long shot with the combination of the Fell Wind. But that's not going to be the case. He's going to go for the long shot anyway now with this level 2 Rangers. And Matthew's They've not paying attention. Oh, that was a nice one. They are not dying because they are buffed, obviously. But they are taking way too much damage, and that's gonna be more than enough to force them back. And during all this time, like, you know, Tracky said, uh, Imperialist is being untouched, boys. He's untouched. He has 625 command points available, has a decent amount of resource income, two power points collected after having Warchant and Felvind. On the other side, Erby has Warchant, Kribane, four power points collected, 500 command points available. He can go for the Lourdes, by the way, now. He has around 1,200 resources collected. Or Sharku. On the other side, we will have Sauron, the Man of the West player, sitting on 575. He has now also the Marketplace up on the field to get more resources. Seven power points collected. And uh, where is uh, the Elven player? He is on four power points after rallying call and heal. 560 command points available for Matthew's Mirix. Well, Imperius has a huge army, and he's just about to lose his first mill. So, uh, Erby finally trying to get some harassment done um, with some walk packs, sending them into Imperialist base. And, uh, yeah, that's exactly what they need to do, because Imperialist has so many thralls right now, um, and uh, he's taken over the game. So, uh, trying to get some harassment done is exactly what Erby needs to do right now. Um, but it's a pretty scary army, Shanks. Uh, and look at this level, to... <laughs> level this, this level 2 farm from the Man of the West play will be taken down uh, by Erby, which is really good. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you don't take down any structures from Sauron, he will get more and more money from those level 2 farms because now also with the buff of the Grand Harvest, it's going to increase his resource income. 
And I think they, were, they wanted to switch the targets and focus on the Alvin player, but that's gonna be even harder for them. Because there's a Steecho in the back, and Engmar and Man of the West, they don't have a way to negate the leadership. Unlike Isengard does, or Elves, with the Mist. And That's another exactly level 2 right. farm is going to be taken down. Um, it's difficult to attack an Elf player, I think we all know that. Um, because, you know, Elves have got the best archers in the game, which are also the best defending unit in the game. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think wise decision to back off from that. But, you know, the trade-off is that now Matty smirks. Um, true to his name, has upgraded his barracks and actually got some Mokwood Arches on the field. So, um, yeah, we could see this game swing back uh, because, you know, Matty's Mercs with the Mercs. Um, you know, we'll have to see if he lives up to his name, Shanks. Yeah, I mean, we have also three Hall of the Kingsmen up on the field, by the way, for Imperialist boys. One of them is level three. That means we're going to get some Dark Rangers soon. There will be a lot of Elite Arches, Rangers, Dark Rangers, and now Mirkwoods. And uh, potentially some Warg Riders soon from the level 2. It's still level 1 though, the Warg Pets from Erby. And I'm also a bit surprised that we don't have any heroes just yet. Never mind, we have Lourdes and Hydir here. I take it back. And they're gonna go for a push. Warcharm was used. This time they have Mirkwood's boys. Is Felwind's ability available? Yes, it is from Imperialist. But the problem is that those ranges, only one of them is level 2. So one long shot is not gonna do too much. <laughs> I don't know what's happening in this fight, Ooh, but it looks okay. like they've been surrounded, haven't they? The BFME2 players have surrounded the Rise of the Witch King players. Yeah. Um, they've even got a tower on the backside. Um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> it could be just this gobbling is them up here in game two. Crazy now. And they can't take down the tower because there are some ranges inside. They are dealing so much damage. We will have uh, Orc, uh, Whiteman of Dunland special summon from Irvi. But will this be enough? There are still so many work packs on the field from Erby. Look at this, guys. It's crazy. Long shot is Who's still available. Who's surrounding who, Shanks? I That's don't know what's truth. going on. There are so many wargs, and they're right on the ranges. Um, it looks like the trebuchet in the Lone Tower from Sauron playing Men of the West um, is going to be the thing that gets surrounded in the end. Um, because, uh, yeah, the uh, Rise of the Witch King guys have taken up a position which is between Sauron's base and But this Lone Tower Sauron's is putting so much work in the back. That's unbelievable. There is a Siege Works offensively from the Man of the West player as well. <laughs> what is going on in this game, boys? Absolute fiesta. And the Man of the West player will be able to defend and take down every single work pack here from Irby. And now they have the upper hand once again. This tower can't be taken down any soon. Because again, the army from the Alvin player Mephis is based on archers. Mist will be used, but I think not the greatest position to use it on. Waldo, however, will be taken down from Imperialist. That's not bad. Uh, the Mist but... actually, um, yeah, sending Sauron and Imperialist back. Um, they maybe don't know how much damage is negated or is done with the Mist. Um, I would have taken that fight, but, you know, if they don't know the balance of the game, maybe that's just uh, showing, you know, that, that they are BFM2 players. And then Lourdes was finally play. able to take down this trebuchet, at least with the Carnage. He's almost level 5. Leadership is now going to be unlocked, which is really good. Gondor Knights, they got to be careful. He might lose them. You're going to shoot them. The Never mind. Well, very well done. Yeah, nice save. And another tower is coming up. Protect the Siege Works. And yeah, by the way, in the meantime, Irby has also a Siege Works up on the field. He's getting the upgrades to get some Ballistas. And this, this army from Mephi, me too. this army from Mephi, again, you know, they can't fight around this area. They can't. He, he needs well, some ants yeah. or anything like that, you know. To, yeah, he's going for the ants mode. Never mind. He's going for the ants mode at the same time. And now we have a lot of Dark Rangers on the field. Did he go for the Banner Carry upgrades? No, he didn't just yet. He's also getting Black Nomonorians, by the way. They have some front line. And... Okay, I mean, he's trying to take down the Trebuchet, but he's gonna lose so many units for that. Look at this. Yeah, two long shots coming down uh, yeah. from the Rangers. And the Trebuchets um, are not able to take down the Furnace, but, you know, he could just build another Trebuchet. <laughs> from I mean, the Trebuchets, they cost 600 each, and if you lose, like, two, three Urukai for that, it's war for the Man of the West player, to be honest. Imperialist right. is such a clever player, you know. He knows that... Um, Matty Smoke's army is huge uh, with the Mirkwood Archers. Um, he's, he makes sure that he keeps Matty occupied on the other side of the map so that Matty can't defend Sauron um, from, from Sauron attacking, you know, with these trebuchets. Uh, yeah. Really, really smart play from Imperialist. 
and the level 3 furnace from Urbi has been taken down now finally. More trebuchets are coming from the siege works. But here's a ballista now on the field. With the help of the ballista, you can actually take down those towers from a safe distance. And Imperialis was able to push Mephis back. He has so many dark ranges on the field, that's crazy. I would, I, I would really like to see now the banner carry upgrade being purchased for the long shot. If you have this many uh, well. rangers with the level 2, and you can land a beautiful Felvins, and then, you know, multiple long shots at once, you can deal so much damage. The midfoods are so weak in terms of defense. He might not need it, you know, Shanks. It looks like, uh, you know, only uh, one battalion of Merkwood Archers is, is going to be left. Um, okay, Snowbind will be used. Oh, wow, Snowbind is used. That's Which interesting. Which is kind of interesting. <laughs> what does it do It was there? used on the statue, so uh, I actually have no idea if it uh, negates what the statue does, but it doesn't matter because Halde is level 7, yeah, and I don't he's know about that, giving man. the leadership <laughs> anyway. Should have used it maybe on the end mood or something, you know, to deny ends from coming out. Would be a better mm, choice. We'll or on it. the siege works from the Isengard's player. Uh, he because might now... need that snow binds for, you know, when this Ent marches up the field <laughs> and he can't defend it, you know? Yeah, true. Uh, and... Wow, this is a really interesting game, Shanks. It looks like uh, BFME2 guys have had the whole time, um, but now we're starting to see Rise of the Witch King players uh, take a little bit of control. They've got the tech advantage. Uh, Irby's got the ballistas. He's managed to take down the Men of the West Trebuchet Siegeworks. And uh, yeah, uh, Matty now with Ents um, could be difficult to defend for Imperialist and Sauron. And the Ballistas, they're gonna take down this tower now. Very well done here from Erby, being able to defend himself. And we have Knights of Dolamrov oh. on the field, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm so excited to see that. On the level uh, 3 stables. Wow, one of the most exciting units in the game, definitely. Um, they're gonna be great against uh, the Ballistas, they're gonna be great against the heroes. Um, we'll have to see how good they are against um, the Merkwood Archers, um, but I think it's a great choice, you know. Um, it's elite cavalry. Um, they can really take, they can pick off lone units, lone ballistas, and that's exactly what Sauron's using them for, uh, taking out these ballistas one by one. And now the rice, uh, the BFME two will, uh, BFME two team will be actually surrounded. I did this level eight, by the way. He's gonna use the golden arrow. Oh yeah, cloud break. Wow. Oh boy. And now we're we gonna go. have arrow when they're coming. Oh, oh Fiesta, <laughs> oh, wow. look this damage, boys. Wow. Imperialist calling it GG after that. One single move. The level there was, eight how There was a really great move here from Mephis man. Golden arrow into the sun, into the beautiful arrow volley. And taking down almost everything from the Man of the West and Engma team. And gonna make the score even again after the game number two. But I see oh, in the chat shanks. Ectilion is back now and Ectilion is gonna be replacing Imperialis <laughs> for the next game. Quite inter it was interesting series really, so far. It was looking really good for the BFME two guys until that one move. Uh, they took out the whole army um, just with the arrow volley golden arrow uh, combination. So. But they were so stacked, you know, and you can expect that, you know. You need to check the Haldir's level and you know the golden arrow is gonna be available. Maybe, you know, being grouped in a, in a small area like this is not the way to go. And one move can Whoa. actually change the outcome of the game, guys. That's crazy. Um, I mean, if the only way to negate that golden arrow is to be stood next to a statue. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, that didn't happen. What a game. Uh, that was a really close game. Could have gone either way. But the game I number three no... on the map living in, boys. He's picking Angmar, Shanks. I have no idea why that's happening, but it seems to be Ectelion, the BFME2 player, picking uh, Angmar, which is the Rise of the Witch King faction. Maybe so he was smurfing, you know? Maybe he was smurfing <laughs> lately with Angmar faction. I don't know. I feel so, because there has to be a reason why the challenge come out of nowhere, you know? So I'm I'm actually expecting mm -hmm. a lot from a lot from Ectelion because he's one of the greatest players in BFME2. One of the, you know, one of the remaining BFME2 experts as well. So let's yeah, see. Yeah, I, th I think I think they consider him to be the best player uh, of all time in BFME2. Um, he's like the Solus of BFME2. So we'll see if he can make the transition to Rise of the Witch King in this game and with the Rise of the Witch King faction, Angmar. All right, boys. And by the way, the Crown's Doctor, thank you so much for the follow. All right, we have the yellow um, Isengard's player, Erby, here. And his ally is the blue... No, wait a second. No, 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 it's different. It's top against uh, bottom. 
Uh, his ally, the, uh, the green Elvin player Mephis, they are against the Man of the West player Sauron, who always picks Man of the West, by the way, in all three games so far. And his ally, unexpected, but it's the truth, Exilion playing the Engma faction at the bottom left side. I'm actually quite so excited about this one. I was not expecting yeah. him to pick Engma. So he pre-picked Engma, it's not like he picked random or something, guys. So let's see. In the previous games, the BFMB2 players had Angmar going up against the Elves. Um, but in this occasion, we've got um, Elves from Matty against Men of the West. So we'll see if the Angmar player can actually make use of the counter pick. Maybe. We're going to have a stable start here for, uh, for the Elven player. I mean, it's going to be a stable delete. Two Malone trees into the stables. Just like in the previous game. And on the other side, we have two, three furnaces on the field for Irby into the Uruk pit. It's the second time he's playing with the Isengard faction. Engma player is starting with th three mills first into the Hall of the Kingsman. And Engma is facing against Erby, by the way, and Sauron is facing against Mephis. Sauron is gonna start with two farms into the barracks. So no calf start just yet for the Engma and Man of the West team. Whew. Wow, look at Ectelion's build order. Um, he's already got four mills. Um, going for a fifth mill on the left hand side. Um, Wow, we'll see if he can make use of a big economy. Why did you write beef him in smaller, Mr. Shanks? I don't know, man. I, it was not intended, really. <laughs> I'm just gonna change that because it's, the question has come so many times already. Stable is coming up. And thank you so much for the follow, by the way. Uh, Swayze. Swayze. You guys have really, really incredible difficult names to pronounce, man. Alright. Okay, there is a signal fire in the middle of the map. Uh, it looks like Man of the West player is not going to go for it. He's going to use the middle pathway. Um, it looks like he's going to go for the Erby. And we have a <laughs> War Chanted Urukai here. And Erby is kind of getting, you know, kind of getting sandwiched all the time. In all three games so far. He's getting focused on Zohart. Ralinko was used. But there are some crossbow men. Will they be able to defend? Oh, he really wants to hit... Yeah, he's hit shield formation and... Um... He was on aggressive stance oh. with those soldiers gondor, but needs to micro them a little bit better, I think. Oh, he's um, gonna give up and try to take down some crossbowmen instead, I think. He's not gonna try to finish off this furnace, which is gonna be difficult. Both riders just in time, but they were able to take down one of the two of the mills actually. And Engma does does have only one two mills up on the fields now. Never mind, he has also a mill here around this area. But he was forced to demolish, and this Urukai are all about to hit level two. Both riders are the weakest. Uh, cavalry unit in the game, by the way. Their damage output is not gonna be that insane against the Urukai, but now that the uh, Warchan falls off. Ooh. And uh, yeah, actually, Exelion managing to take down one of the furnaces on the other side uh, at the same time yeah. uh, as all of this happening. Um, it's gonna be good for him to take trades like this because, you know, he's got more nice mills than uh, Erby has furnaces. So yeah, nice trade for Exelion. But the Urukai are actually able to stall long enough to buy so much time against the Wolf Riders. They are tanky. I mean, they were much tanky before. Remember before the, before the armor fix in Rise of the Witch King when they were using the shield ball and hold ground stands. They could stand there and tank like a, like a man, like 10 trumples. <laughs> yeah, they can. Um, it, this is exactly what you need to do, by the way, if you're playing Angmar into Isengard. So, Ectelion doing a bit of homework. Um, you need Wolf Riders in this matchup early, uh, because otherwise, uh, Isengard player can just make Uruk after Uruk after Uruk and uh, overwhelm with uh, a lot of Uruk high. Uh, so, yeah, this is exactly the kind of build that you need to do. Tran is saying in the chat if Mephi lose, I have no choice, only unfriend him. <laughs> no, don't do that, man. Everyone can lose some games, but it's a best of seven challenge, so they have still. I mean, it's even right now, it's not like they are losing. But Mephi is kinda getting a bit crushed here from the Man of the West player. He was able to take down his Lorian Arches with a great trample. Sauron was doing a great job micro wise. Yeah. And so now and Engma player is taking down a Malon tree. He took down a Malon tree as well, so it was definitely a win for Sauron. Actually playing really well on this Man of the West. Um pick. Uh, you don't see Men of the West picked too often. I think there's only Alex Shelnot who picking Men of the West every game. Uh, so, yeah, really, really nice to see it uh, from Sauron here. Yeah, true. Okay, in the meantime, uh, soldiers are defending against Urukai, but they were able to take down one of those uh, mills from the Engma player Exilion. The furnace is gonna be taken down, and yeah, Erby is kinda, you know, losing a lot of furnaces right there. 
Let me check his command points real fast. He has 250 command points only, guys. That's the only furnace he has up on the field. And he's wow. gonna really struggle resource-wise. And look, the army coming from the Engma player Exilion. Yeah, actually, Matty playing really badly this game. Uh, he just lost another Lorien Archers to a Gondor Knight Trample, and he's going to lose another Malon Tree as well. That's um, so, massive. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's... Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, I thought with Imperialist gone that we might be, um, you know, seeing the Rise of Witch King guys do a little bit better, but look at this uh, BFME 2 players. Um, they've got Dire Wolves taking out Pikes. They've got another double coming in on Urbi, and uh, it's looking bad for Urbi again. Yeah, I mean, he has three work packs. By the way, thank you so much for the pull of Grey009. Appreciate it. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay, buddy. Alright, Warchan was used from Exilion. He's trying to take down the Uruk Pits. Um, and there are no more... There's only one furnace in the back. That's pretty much it. Irby... Now, never mind. He was able to build another one here. Uh, will they be able to take down the Uruk Pits? It looks like it. <laughs> the Uruk Pits going down, Shanks. And um, Irby's only gonna be able to make wargs. So, uh, until he builds another Uruk Pit... Uh, of course, it means but, no more yeah. pikemen any soon for Irby. And the Volt Riders, <laughs> they can do so much work. He has only work packs, guys, and he's losing every single one of them. The attack continues. Ectelion is not done just yet. Mephi <laughs> has to send reinforcements to defend his ally, but it might be again too late for that. It is too late, and, you know, they just retreat away from this rally called Lorien Archers. Um, really sensible play. I think that Sauron's building a well in Ectelion's base, so he's just going to be able to heal up his army and go again with an even bigger force next time. And I think Ectelion shows us that he can play Rise of the Witch King if he wants to, even with a faction that doesn't exist in BFME 2. Quite impressive gameplay right there from the BFME 2 expert. I mean, this is the ultimate, you know, um, we are gonna, we are better players than you, isn't it? Picking the Angmar faction and actually taking a lead in the early game. There's no other way to spell this because uh, BFME2 guys are definitely on top in this game again. That's so true. That's so true. By the way, Stormcrow, my man, welcome to the stream. Long time no see. Hope you are doing great. Uh, second Hall of the Kingsman is coming up for Ectelion. Um, at this point, what you want to do with the Engma and Man of the West faction is you don't want to you don't want to give too much time to Irby. He's really behind, so you want to keep up the pressure, deny him to come back to this game. He has only a couple of work packs. That's all he has. He's finally able to rebuild the Uruk pits, but that's gonna take a lot of time for him to get ready again. And in the meantime, the army from the Engma player was able to heal up. That's gonna be a massive attack. <laughs> it's such a big army, isn't it? thelion has got nearly 550. Um, command points worth of army. Um, so, you know, Irby's got zero. <laughs> Irby has it's a massive discrepancy. Yeah. <laughs> but Mephi, in the meantime, uh, was able to put some counter pressure. He was able to take down one of those farms from Sauron. Uh, Sauron, I think what they need to do is just group now, bring those Gondor Knights to the Engma player, and then go for a big Warchant play. And there is no way oh. Irby being able to defend this attack without the help from his ally. There's just so many dogs, Shanks, on the field, you know. Who let the <laughs> and, dogs uh... out? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, they take it down the furnace. They're running around. They're picking off pikemen. I mean, you know, Ectelion just playing great. Uh, absolutely smashing Irby. And Irby had the counter pick this game. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true, guys. Ectelion is putting in so much work right there. But trampling the Elven, Arch Elven Pikeman, it's not what you want to do with those uh, Wolf Riders. So he needs to wake up a bit. Um, Lone Tower Special Summon was used, by the way, uh, where? I, I can see it. On the um, other side of the map. It's on the on right the other hand side. side. That's it's a great move. Arch, so you can put so much yeah. pressure on the Elven army again. And there is no way they can take it down. Because Mephi keeps spamming from double barracks, most likely arches all the time. It's really interesting, Sauron going for the exact same strategy as last game and the game before with the forward trebuchet uh, expansion. Uh, and they so, have the orc uh, special summon, by the way, from Ectelion happening. Oh, nice. And yeah, let me check Irby right now, guys. Irby has 400 command points only. He has some units on the fields, but they are being used offensively, the, the wolf uh, packs, the work packs, I mean. Look how many he has on the field. He's trying to put some counter pressure to take down some of those mills and farms from, their open, from his opponents. But yes, that means he has no units, howsoever, to defend himself. And the work pits, <laughs> level 1, is going to be taken down. He's using the Kreevain to debuff the enemy units. That's just going to delay, but not going to deny. And he's going to probably lose the Uruk pit right after. The Furnace has been taken down. He's sitting on 300 command points. He's being command points capped. Can't get the Urukai up on the fields anymore. 
and he's still trying to put some counter pressure. Offense is the best defense, but not in this situation, guys. That is no help from Excelion in BFME 2. Um, that attack just there on Irby would have taken down every single structure that Irby has and, uh, you know, manages to take down the wall pit, uh, but doesn't get the Uruk pit and doesn't get the well, doesn't get the other furnace, so... Will this end um, be able to take down this tower? <laughs> no, it's, it's gonna go down just before the last hit. The trebuchet was able to take it down. Uh, this is in the range from the end, by the way, unfortunately, but the siege has begun, guys. Look at this, this trebuchet starts firing on this fortress from the Alvin player Mephis. And Mephis it's so funny when the N expansion approach. goes down, the N expansion kind of droops. And yeah, kind they, of they, are, they are looking kind of sad, you know, like, oh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's autumn and all its leaves have fallen off <laughs> or something. Um, wow, looks like um, BFME2 uh, winning this game again. This is actually quite dope, man. I really like to see that. I'm a big fan and I am normally, as you know guys, I am streaming much more Rise of the Witch King than I do stream BFME 2. But I'm always a fan when an underdog wins and for me the BFME 2 team is the underdog in this challenge. Especially with the Engmar faction. Ectelion is popping off this game by the way boys. And thank you so much for the follow Lord Ryas. Appreciate it. Wow, yeah, Ectelion really silenced Derby in this game, and Matty wasn't able to help out at all. Um, I mean, Matty is struggling himself now. against Sauron, to be honest. He's struggling. Um, I mean, he it is, was yeah. more the fact that Sauron was helping Ectelion during the push when Erby was getting attacked from both sides. But it also looks like that, you know, Sauron is able to win his very own side of the map as well. Solo. Oh, he's smashing Matty, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, actually, Glorfindel going in for... Um, the, <laughs> well, the 1v9, shall we say, but the rebuild being used on the Lone Tower um, is just going to repel that, and uh, yeah, could, is this going to be GG, do you think? I mean, I believe in shenanigans. This one has to be, has to be a big one. Um, you know, look at this. Now, Engmar player Ectelion is also taking down all the possible Malone trees from the Alvin player Mephis. He has so many Wolves in the backside as well. He's splitting his army quite nicely. Going for the well, maximum damage output. At the very same Irby time, Irby is, is attacking Engma. Yeah, and he's one power point away from getting a Wildman summon, which they desperately need to use to kill those trebuchets, because otherwise it's going to be over. Irby just getting to 10 ring points now. Um, we'll see if he takes the Wildman summon, uh, because otherwise I have I see no way of um, the Rise of the Witch King guys taking these trebuchets out. Yeah, and it's gonna it's just a matter of time. Um, yeah, what can they do? I mean, elves, they can't go for rebuilds. Isengard can't help him. There is no Snowbind or something like this in the Isengard faction. So if this, if this fortress goes down, the game is going to be over. And it's and just Irby a matter of taking time. devastation, actually. So not even going for the Wildman summon yeah, um, at all. Look, oh, this I is going to be close, Shanks. This is going to be close. Look at this. Look at this, guys, please. Yes, uh, Mephi has... Are <laughs> over 3,500 resources collected, but his command points kept. Can use them. Can use the money. Oh, Erby coming across with all of his walk packs. He's going for the trebuchet. Oh. And he was able to take both of them. That's really good. The fortress is so <laughs> low, so low. Not even close, baby. But look at this. Ectelion has the giant special summon ready anyway, you know? Oh, he's gonna summon the giants and then he's gonna take down the fortress anyway. I speak with the Witch King oh no, and the fortress wow. is super low. I think if you know both giants attack it once, it's gonna go down. Oh, he can use giant summon right this instant and take it down. Uh, maybe he's just waiting um, for the for reinforcements like maybe to come. Play, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe he just doesn't know how much damage it does to the fort, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, has he used this power before? <laughs> That's the question. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Alright, Tom Bombadil's special summon will be used from Sauron to protect this tower. And they won't be able to take it down. We have another end expansion coming up to smash the tower. It's gonna go down with one more hit. Oh, Shanks! Giants used on the other side of the map. Uh, okay. Um, taking down for Irby's fort. I don't like this. Play. I don't like this. I don't like, I don't like it at all. You can end the game right here using it on, uh, you know, Matty Smoke's but fort. But Lourdes is actually able to get to the Giants and dealing massive damage with his Carnage. One Giant is already down. And I think both Fortresses are going to be very low, but they oh, might be able to survive. Oh, there's a Troll Stone Thrower as well. So he's got the pints on, on Irby's Fortress. Oh. He's got the Troll Stone Thrower on the other side. 
Okay, it's gonna Ooh, go down. Go down. <laughs> oh my goodness, boys. Irby is calling it GG. The fortress from Elvin plays also super low. Irby is gonna leave the game. We'll get defeated. And the score after game number three is gonna be 2 1 in favor of the BFME 2 team, boys. I'm All right, ready. guys, little updates. The 2v2 is going to be, you know, delete. We're going to continue with that in an hour. But for now, we're going to have a 1v1 between Exilion against Irby. On the map, Forts of Eisen, both players picking random like a boss. Let's get it started. Yeah, nice to see them pick random. Maybe that was uh, the problem with uh, the last time, Ur Irby picking Isengard, you know? Ooh. Um, <laughs> we got a men mirror, lads. Man mirror, I mean, this is kind of boring, not gonna lie, <laughs> but also the most balanced thing you can actually get. Mirror games on neutral host, guys. Both players, you know, they don't have any advantage matchup wise. The same map, the same matchup on someone, someone else's host. And on the right side, we have the yellow Man of the West player, Irby. And his opening on the left side is the blue Man of the West player, Axelion. Pretty damn good. Let's see. What, what, are, what is your expectation about this matchup, about this game between those two players, Trucky? Well, I have no idea what Ectelion's going to bring out in this game. Um, it looks like he's going for a full farm start. Uh, he did this in the last game in the 2v2 where he went for four mills uh, and then a fifth mill on Angmar. Um, this time he's going with four farms and Irby with the barracks after the first two farms. So we'll see who gets the early lead. But, I mean... And, you know, we're gonna have a soldier or pikeman unit coming first. Let me let me see if he set any waypoint from the barracks. No, he didn't do it just yet. So he might go for the creep uh, with the pikeman from Rohan, or he can go for an offensive push. Offensive push would be a better choice in a situation like this. And he can actually punish uh, Ectelion for those four farm starts. And again, Shanks, gonna go for his offensive just four stable. Farms, right? How many farms is he gonna get? Where's his builders going? <laughs> Oh, here we go. Forward barracks, Shanks. Have you seen this by the river? I have seen this oh, already wow. a couple of times in BFME too, yes. <laughs> but yeah. Oh my goodness. Do you think um, he will make one barracks or two? I don't know. I mean, this is kind of something we have seen a lot in version 7. He's going to go for double barracks, by the way, boys. Double barracks at the river. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, soldiers um, are coming. So he's going to get more soldiers early in the meantime. They will be out on the field faster. And now we're gonna focus on the vision control from Irby. How much will he be able to see? I think he's gonna see the barracks because he's actually moving through the right side of the river. And yeah, so if going Irby for creeps man. this game, um, he he won't see this coming. No, he doesn't see it coming. He does. He didn't see he the barracks. He still doesn't see. He, he still doesn't see. Still wow. Doesn't see. Oh wow. Well, oh, he was and checking Ectelion... the creep if he's going for the creep or not. Now he was able to see the barracks. First one, and also the second one. Now he's like, now what he's, is going on in this game? I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know about that early Rohan Spearman from Ectelion. He's already delayed his barracks by so much. Yeah. Um, he's going for the creep after. Like, I think that's just very, very greedy play. But <laughs> we'll see if Obi can capitalize. Um, I mean, he's kind of tanking. He's kind of tanking the damage now with the... I think, look, Irby is making a mistake here. Um... He commits to that barracks, which means more reinforcements gonna come from Ectelion all the time. Barracks is quite hard to take down, right? At the beginning of the game, at least, with soldiers. But at the same time, Ectelion has so many farms being untouched, so he has a great amount of resource income. That means he can even go for the stables right there, you know, around this side of the map, and go for Gondor Knights and trample down those, uh, trample down those soldiers, or for Archer Range, or for a hero even. I mean, Ectelion has a great resource income, guys. Double barracks means he's gonna outnumber those units pretty fast. But we have now Gondor Knights coming from Irby on the field. Okay. Irby playing standard. He's got three farms. He's got the barracks and the stables. Uh, Ectelion playing anything but standard. <laughs> Two forward barracks and uh, about five or six farms. Something like this. All right. Uh, Imperialist is just saying in the chat that he's ready to play. So even if Sauron is not gonna be back after this game, we can pick up Imperialis and Imperialis and Ectelion will be facing against Mephi and Irby. That might be the way to go. Let's see. I'd love to see that. Uh, I think that that should be what we go for. Um, it looks like with those Gondor Knights from Irby that this game um, could be coming to a close pretty shortly, Shanks. Yeah. Um, if he takes down these barracks. I mean, they're taking a long time to go down, to be fair. But um, just the combination... Um, from Irby of the Gondor Knights and the, the Gondor soldier soldiers. dealing so much damage to the pikeman, that's crazy. Yeah. Wanna use support spine formation? 
It's a great trade for Abby, this. He's got yeah. the Gondor soldiers fighting the Rohan spearmen, and he's got the Gondor knights um, being able to trample the Gondor soldiers, so... Hmm. But so far, Erby doesn't have any pikemen on the field just yet. And the first uh, Gondor knight is gonna be joining the fight now from Exilion. So that can change some things, maybe? Can defend yeah, against those soldiers? Erby, yeah, forces Erby to make some Rohan spearmen, which, um, you know, is gonna be really nice for Exilion. Nice trample here. And he will be able to save those Parax, by the way. Uh, Erby didn't finish this farm for some reason. Now he's gonna go back again. I think that was a... Uh, and, uh, you know, he didn't want to micro. All this right. game is not over at all. This um, game is not over at all, guys. I mean, no Ectilion way. has 450 command points. He's gonna have now 400 after losing this farm. He's gonna go for another Gondonite battalion, by the way, from the barracks. And now he's going for a push. Look at this. He has two soldiers. No pikemen around, though. That's what I don't like to see. Um, and there is only one Gondonite battalion on the field from Erby. But this one is level 2 and it's quite healthy. Is Rallying Call ability available? Erby has 6 power points collected and Ectelion has around 4 power points collected. But I, I don't, don't like that move out yeah, no, from like Ectelion. Like he didn't have any pikemen and uh, yeah, it looks like they're just gonna get cleaned up right here by one yeah. uh, Gondor, Gondor Knight. Yeah. Maybe you can try to block that with the Gondor Knights and try to punish them for that, but you can try to snipe down some of them as they are getting slowed down, but there was a beautiful trample. Holy moly, man. Look how much damage he was able to deal. That's crazy. And Iomi is coming for the spot anyway and gonna be a great choice against the Gondor Knights from Ectelion. Yeah, it's a great choice, I think, uh, Iomi in this matchup because um, the spear throw when you get level 2 um, can take out, you know, three of the enemy Gondor Knights. You can even use it on Spearmen. Um, yeah, Iomi is definitely a great choice in this situation where your enemy is going for uh, also cavalry. Um, nice spear ability from Iomir, he's already level 3. And yeah, with the level 4, he's gonna have the outlaw leadership, that means more resource income for Erby. He has the unit advantage right now, he has the hero advantage right now. Will this be enough to finish off Ectelion? I mean, his barracks are still on the field, he's gonna spam more and more units, he has a bit more command points. Now, never mind, in terms of command points, it's quite even. But the thing is, Ectelion's farm is gonna hit level 2 faster. Remember, he started with multiple farms at once. Three of them are all about to hit level 2 pretty soon. So, Erby has to take them down really fast, really soon. Um, Ectelion saving for a hero, it looks like. He's got about uh, 1,000 resources. Can um, go for Eomir. Could he be going for Eomir as well? Yeah, I think so. It's gonna be a great choice against the Gondonites from Erby. But to be fair, Erby has only one land. Never mind, he's going for the second Gondonite now from the stables. Okay, Rally Call was used from Erby and from Ectilion as well. Yeah. Both players using Rally Call. You can't see it because it's in the water, but yeah, yeah there's a Rally Call on all of those units. Uh, Pikeman, or oh, nice one here from Ectilion, microing well and denying, you know, those Condonites from Erby to go for a trample. But Erby has still some healthy units in the river and it looks like he will be using those uh, Gondonites and Eomir to take down some of those farms. Um, yeah, oh, let's see, boy. I mean... A this is a pretty here. good game, Shanks. I'm really interested oh, by this Oh, Aeropole coming character. from Erby! Ooh, <laughs> that's a nice e one. And again, I think this Aeropole is the game-changing thing right there today, boys. Oh, Two boy. games in a row, dealing so much damage, and Ectarium wasn't able to dodge it. And he's gonna lose both the barracks. No more barracks, no more pikemen. And now the Gondor Knights are unstoppable from Erby. They can do whatever they want. There is no counterplay. He's rebuilding the barracks now at the side of the fortress. He's not going to give up. He's going to rebuild the barracks. He's got Aomer on the field as well, so it's definitely not over. And actually finding quite a lot of Gondor soldiers to trample yeah. um, is Ectelion. So he's not giving up, which he's I like. He's building even a tower expansion. Never mind, he's cancelling it. All right, nice trample into the soldiers here once again from Erby. Iomir is level 4, so whenever he kills enemy units, he's gonna get some money from that as well. The level 2 farm is gonna go down. The, the Gondor Knights from Ectarium were able to take down many soldiers here, though. What are the power points? I mean, <laughs> Erby is so ahead in terms of power points as well, that's unbelievable. He has more than 5 power points advantage over Ectarium right now. Yeah, and Erby hasn't taken a single creep either this whole game. So uh, all of those power points have been gained from, um, you know, killing Ectelion's troop and taking good trades.
I think the mistake was not even the fact that he went for four, five, five, uh, four or five farms before the double barracks, but I think the mistake was that he started with the pikemen first. Um, I think that was very greedy. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, Actelion losing quite a lot of his Gondor knights on the other side of the map. Yeah, he lost um, a battalion here and almost lost a second as well. Yomi is almost level 4 though, that's good. Uh, Irby is just taking down every single farm here from Ectelion. And yeah, I mean, this is kind of going as expected, to be honest. Um, but I really appreciate the greedy move. I need more hotkeys. <laughs> <laughs> The hotkeys are the same in uh, BF Me 2 as in Rise of the Witch King. Uh, at least a lot of them are. Um, you know, Gondor Soldier is D. Um, you know, you can even control one, uh, some of your units and production buildings. So uh, <laughs> maybe he's just not playing with many hotkeys today. I don't know. Look at uh, this, man. Exactly he has two tower expansions <laughs> and then a tower <laughs> in front of that as well. <laughs> so it's going to be hard up. for Irvi to take it down, I guess. There are no archers inside of this tower though. This is a lone tower special summon, by the way. From uh, Ectarion, he has only 250 command points, has only one farm remaining on the field. And Serbia has 725 command points, boys. That's a massive advantage. I mean, if Ectarion comes back from this situation, he deserves also <laughs> an expert patch in Rise of the Witch King, guys, okay? Oh, uh, yeah, man. Absolutely. Just give him one now. Yeah, <laughs> Irby just going slow, which is the right call, I think. He's gonna go for the creeps. He's creeping three works at the same time, pretty much. He has so much units, so many units on the field, he can do whatever he wants. And I think with Irby the units he has, he can yeah. also commit fully to this tower. But yeah, I he, think he doesn't want to take the risk. all of the creeps, he's playing it slow, just getting that resource income. Uh, making sure that he doesn't make a big mistake and go into the tower. It's GG, my bro. Exactly. <laughs> I don't see coming back from the situation, guys. Alright. Double well is coming up to heal up those units faster from Irby. And yeah, he's making a great use of his command points as well. His, you know, the perfect split between Gondor Knights and Aragorn, son of Aratorn, guys. There we go. Aragorn is joining the fight. The king of the man. Gonna lead to fights against the man from Exilion. <laughs> yeah, who is the real king? Who's the real uh, the man <laughs> player, you know? That's the question. Alright, I mean... I don't like the fact that Irby is giving too much time, but now here's, uh, here's Aragorn on the field. Once he's level 2, the Blade Master is gonna hit like a truck, as you know, guys. He's gonna be able to take down those structures quite fast. Aragorn is also quite tanky with the Blade Master, so he can tank that tower damage all day long. Um, in the meantime, Ectelion is trying to put some counter pressure, splitting his Gondor Knights, trying to, you know, pressure a bit, take down some of those farms, try to keep Irby at his own side of the map, you know, but Irby is going to go for a push anyway, with soldiers and pikemen. It's just a nice little trick that sometimes you can catch the enemy player off guard. If you just have, you know, I mean, Ectelion has, you know, four different units running around Irby's base. Um, you know, sometimes that can cause confusion. The Irby, he's a great player, um, just sends everything to <laughs> Ectelion's base and uses a big rally call. So, yeah. not going to fall for the bait. Aragorn here is here as well. Look, this tower started going down within seconds against those units. Aragorn can always use the Atela's ability to heal up his uh, ally, Iomia, in the worst case. Just surround the fortress now and focus on it. Ectelion could go for the revealed to delay, but that's just gonna delay and not gonna deny, guys. And the game will be over. Irby is gonna be the winner. Yeah, nice for Irby to get that win. I think he must have been feeling pretty sad about the last game. Oh, the rebuild, though! Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but it's not gonna do anything, man. It's like, you know, giving him the chance to live five more seconds. Aragorn gets level three. Wow, actually, Blade did you see that? 875 uh, resources for killing the fortress. Yeah, it's crazy, Aobea right? Around. Crazy. That's a lot. I didn't even know That's that, that like you can buying... also get money from killing <laughs> enemy structures. You can buy another Aramir for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Iomi is paying off so big time and you have him level 4, you know? Every, every game so far I've seen him being used. Once he's getting level 4, he's actually paying off so much. Aragorn, by the way, level 4, has the leadership unlocked. Yeah, I oh, think Aomer is the summon. unsung hero, isn't he, in uh, uh, the 
you know, uh, Lord of the Rings movies. Uh, he yeah. gets the Rohirrim, in, he saves Helm's Deep, he gets the Rohirrim again to come for <laughs> uh, the kind of Pelena Fields battle. Um, doesn't really get all the credit. I think Theoden gets a lot of the credit <laughs> and Gandalf gets a lot of the credit, um, you know, when it can go to Eomer. Um, King of the Horse Lords. Uh, that was a nice game. I That's really nice like that game. start by Ecthelion. And now we can continue with the 2v2s, guys. We can pick up Imperialist. Uh, you know, he can replace Sauron for the next game. All right, guys. The game number four is all about to begin on the map, Forts of Rohan. Mephis Mirix on his elves, Erby on his dwarves, Ectelion on the random faction, and Imperialist on the Engmar on the map, Forts of Rohan. And he gets to pick... He gets dwarves, actually. So it's going to be dwarves and Engmar against dwarves and elves. Forts of Rohan, it is going to be. Oh, Ecthelion Dwarfs. I think this is his weakest faction um, for Rise of the Witch King. Um, but uh, in a mirror, anything can happen. So uh, Shang's pretty excited about this one. We don't see this map getting played very often. Do you want to walk us through it? Um, to be honest, it's the first time I see this map. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't say too much. We're going to check it together now. But first of all, take a look into the spots. At the bottom left side, we have the blue Dwarf player Ecthelion. He picked random, by the way. His ally is the green Engmar player Imperialist. Their opponent at the top left side is the green Elven player Mephis. And his ally at the top right side is the yellow dwarf player Erby. So we have a, uh, in here, just in front of the bases, being protected by the Vork layer. And we have a troll layer here protecting the signal fire. Same, you know, it's the same situation at the top side of the map, pretty much. Um, and we have a giant, and we, have, we have a big, you know, pathway in the middle, this river, but also small pathways at the, at the left side and at the right side of the map. So technically you can make a tower here, right here, and then you can actually, you know, protect the pathway <laughs> easily. I hope that's not going to be the case. I hope <laughs> you're going to see more fights than towers. Let's see. Yeah, let's t place bets. Who will build the first tower? <laughs> All right. Um, me too or Rise of the Witch King? <laughs> what do you guys think? Who's going to make the first tower? I don't think Erby is going to make a tower, to be honest. I think Imperialis will be the first one who's going to make a tower, but I might be wrong. Let's see. Look at Ecthelion's build order again. He's going for his fifth mine shaft, so expanding massively and only now just getting the Hall of Warriors up. So This guy likes money, you know? He likes money. Crazy eco start. Yeah, we'll see if it pays off. Um, It might do. Uh, it looks like Imperialis going standard with the... Uh, two Hall of Kings men and the mill. Um, but yeah, I'm just really excited by Delion. He's bringing some really new ideas to Rise of the Witch King. Um, and uh, while Matty and Erby are creeping, uh, they're not going to be attacking. So this could be the new meta. Yeah, greedy dwarves. Yeah, Benzi, you're right. <laughs> greedy dwarves, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, the dwarf player Erby was going for the creep. And that's also being the case from the Alvin player, Mephi. Um, the creeps at the bottom side of the map are still available. I'm just curious about how much vision control he's gonna gain from this one. Let's see. Once he's done, I think he's gonna be able to see this in and the work layer. And even a bit more, maybe. And yeah, he sees actually a lot. He sees his entire pathway with the signal fire. That's crazy. Oh, that's really nice for him. He's that's gonna really see good. those guardians on the left-hand side, and he's yeah. gonna see also that the war glare has not been crept. So, opportunity to steal a creep hit from Matty and Erby. Yeah, and that's gonna be the case potentially. There are some units from Erby, and it looks like they wanna group and focus on Ectelion. Ectelion is asking his ally, the beacon are burning. <laughs> Well, Ecthelion has got a sneaky mineshaft all the way up on the right-hand side by Erby's base. Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to use it right now because he has no units. <laughs> yeah, he has no but, units. But, uh, you know, at least this is going to be the plan. And that's going to be actually Fiesta already at the beginning of the game. Erby and Mephis are both focusing down Ecthelion. Ecthelion has a great resource income. He's going to make a tower around the fortress to protect himself. But he might need some assistance from his ally Imperialist to defend this. He's going to lose now the second mineshaft. At the same time, he was trying to put some pressure with those guardians. He was using rallying call on them as well to buff them. They actually took down a Malon tree there as well, which was pretty nice pickup for Ecthelion. I mean, whilst he's losing quite a lot back at home, um, you know, if he's able to do some damage to the economy... I think uh, he's going to even take down the second Malon tree with those guardians. 
Hmm, it's looking good. Um, is Imperialist going to be able to hold this uh, push off though? I don't know. I think it's looking like, uh, you know, the Lorian Archers with the Mifflon Sentry and the Phalanx are yeah. <clears throat> too strong right now for the Axe Throwers. Uh, and the, he's going to lose the whole of the Kingsmen. Luckily he has one more left at the bottom right side. Guardians are coming from the back line, but there are still some archers that are being buffed from the Rallying Call. That means they should be easily able to take down those Guardians. At the very same time, uh, Ecterion sending now some units to Irby's side of the map, trying to take down one of the most important mineshafts. Should be able to. That's really yeah. good, I like it. That's really nice for him. Um, at the same time, he loses his forward mine. Herbie manages to pick that up. Yeah. But um, yeah, I would say that it's definitely worth uh, not defending Imperialist base, but just going for the attack. <laughs> um, and look at this. There's a creature guys. coming up here from uh, Irby. So they want to continue pressuring the Angmar player Imperialist right there. Uh, as Irby was able to defend himself, and they're going to send now more reinforcements. Maybe building a mineshaft would be the way to go. This is a mineshaft here from Ectelion, by the way. He wanna send some units as fast as possible to his ally side of the map. And fighting around this area is gonna be challenging now for the Engma player and also for the dwarf player Ectelion. And we have some battle wagons here, but okay. Yeah. It cuts off a lot of the teamwork as well. If you build a statue there between the two fortresses, um, yeah, you're able to slightly cut off the teamwork between Imperialist and Ectelion. So, uh, really nice position there, taken up from Rise of the Witch King, guys. Um, hopefully they can actually Ooh. win a game, because <laughs> they're 2-1 down right now. Yeah, 2-1 down now, right now, but this one is looking really good for the Rise of the Witch King team. Uh, but it's not over just yet. Mephi is creeping the work layer, and I think the major advantage they got actually was at the beginning of the game, with both going for the creeps. Irby was even getting some hobbits from the inn, he's getting more and more hobbits also. And the vision, the vision control you are actually able to gain from the signifier is actually quite insane. He was able to see so much with that. Oh, and... oh thanks. We have a tower. Tower? <laughs> Irby building the first tower in oh, the middle of the map. I'm disappointed. <laughs> Irby. It, I, I was not expecting it from you. Know, from you. And <laughs> Imperial is going to call it GG already. We know Imperial is, you know, is giving up way too fast when the game is not looking you know, really favorable for him. Unlike Irby, for example, on the other side from the Rise of the Witch King team, Irby likes to fight until the very end, you know? But this was the fastest game in the series so far. That Maybe, a... now that Five the score minutes. is even, uh, Ectelion is not gonna pick random anymore. Let's see. Yeah. He... Alright boys, the game number 5 on the brand's new map, Sao Farfeng. It's all about to begin. Um... This time we're gonna have Engmar and Engmar for BFME 2 team against Elves and Mordor for the Rise of the Witch King team. I think Solas made this map, did he? Yeah, he made this is map. Like a couple of days ago, I think. This is a brand new map, actually. It's quite nice. It's like uh, Buckland and the Shire sort of uh, merged together, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I uh, even yeah. played a couple of games on this map myself, so I have a lot of experience. You know? Okay. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, yeah. all right, cool. We're getting into the game. All right. At the bottom left side, we have the blue Engmar player, Exelion. His ally, the green Engmar player, is Imperialist. They are against the top right Mordor player, Irby. And his ally, top left, is the Elven player, Mephis. Hey, Dario. What's up? And there is an outpost in the middle uh, of this map. So we're gonna see a lot of fights going on. Imperialist was already pinging his ally and saying, okay, you know what, we're gonna get this outpost as fast as possible and try to protect. So I'm expecting in this map many, many towers being used around the outpost here. Hmm. Interesting to see whether they do that. There's a, there's a lot of creeps around the edge, right? I think they're just being pinged out. There's troll creeps, war glares, all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, so there's even money to be maze you know in the sides of the map as well as in the middle with the outpost true that's true and i think you know for like an evil faction like isengard for example you could get some lumber mills here or for for the mortar player to get some more money or for the goblins i mean oh yeah um, it's full of trees isn't it this full map of trees you get a lot of cash actually from that from that many trees in the back but hmm. Yeah, we have here a uh, whole of the Kingsmen start. Obviously, the Engma doesn't have too much choices to begin the game with. So both players, both Engma players, gonna start with the whole of the Kingsmen. But again, Exelion starting really delays 
as he's going again for multiple mills first. I see one, two, three, four, five mills coming up before the whole of the king's man. That's crazy. And the first one who's gonna get the outpost control is going to be the Alvin player, Mephis. So he's, yeah, oh, he's Matthew gonna destroy it. Fast, yeah, he went for the fast barracks. Um, so he actually um, is only just getting his third Malon tree up right now. Um, so what basically needs to happen is Matty needs to attack Ectelion and uh, take out maybe one or two of the mills, because otherwise Ectelion's gonna go with that uh, e economy advantage again. Um, and we saw that work really well in the, um, you know, last 2v2 where he was playing Angmar. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll have to see. Matt, it looks like he's he's doing the right thing this time. Yeah, he's going for a push with Florian, Warriors, and uh, Pikeman. And at the same time, Erby has two Orc Pits up on the field, boys. And the Haradrim Palace is upgrading that to level 2 just now. And then we're going to see some of those Haradrim Lancers joining the battlefields pretty soon. This mill will be taken down for sure. At the same time, Imperialis is going for a push with Pikeman and Gandabad warriors. But multiple Orc units from RB, they will be ready to defend. And it looks like that's gonna be enough to force him back. Orcs are running it down to the fortress here from RB. Will be taken down. And Rylinko was used actually here. He was able to take down one, two mills I think already, right? Um, I think one mill has gone... Down oh, and one was demolished. double buff action in there. He's committing to the whole oh. of the Kingsman. Look, this damage output wow. to Rallying Call and Eye of Sauron combination, boys. Really oh, nice. Yeah, nice. really nice from Irby. Um, and it goes down easily. Uh, still Super got fast. pretty much full units left. So yeah. <laughs> having a lot of trouble defending this right now. That's uh, crazy, actually. Is the right thing to do. I would like to say that, you know, Irby, but also his ally Mephis are reading Ectelion like a book. They're expecting him to go for a greedy 4-5 mil start. They know the units will be delayed on the field. And they know they can punish him for that. There was a great punishment with the double buff of the Eye of Sauron and the Rallying Call combination. And the double Engmar team, they don't have a way to negate the leadership. So, this is gonna be what a thing, seeing? I think, later on as well. Yeah, losing that Hall of King's Men delays Ectelion a lot. Um, but he managed to take down a Malon tree on the other side of the map, which is only just being rebuilt. So he still had the economy advantage this whole time over Matty. Um, so even though it looks bad getting the Hall of King's Men um, for Ectelion, then uh, maybe he's not getting hit as hard as he uh, should be because there's no follow-up. Um, Imperialist doing a good job attacking um, and also, uh, yeah, putting a lot of pressure all over the map. Um, so definitely not GG. <laughs> not GG right at all, not GG at all. Of course, you can come back always from, you know, any situation. Um, but the thing is that Irby is also putting so much pressure on the Engmar player Imperialist right now. And we know Mord has an incredible wealth scaling into the late game. He's going for the first tower, Irby once again, the master of the towers. The first battle tower is being built from Irby. <laughs> oh no, Irby, shame on you. Shame on you, Irby. <laughs> and there are so many Orc warriors on the field, that's crazy. Lancers in the back, Easterlings are here to, you know, fight against those Wolf Riders from the Engma player, Exilion. Wow, Irby with full command points of just Orc Warriors. Um, yeah. Really going for the big Orc spam right now. <laughs> um, I would also expect to see now uh, maybe, you know, Govmok, but that's not going to be the case. He's going for the Troll Cage at the same time. Warcham was trolls used. are great in this matchup against Angmar. Angmar has a hard time dealing with the trolls, and until you get dark ranges, um, you don't really have any counters to the trolls. You can use spell wind, but it requires the trolls to be out of position. So until he can upgrade a Hall of King's Men to level three, get some dark ranges, um, there's going to be no easy way to stop those trolls. Um, so yeah, I really like that choice by Irby in this matchup. Yeah, and I think this is looking really great so far for the Mordor and Elven team. Um, you know, they have clear advantages, obviously, as we have seen at the beginning of the game with the double buff faction. And if you pick the same faction, you know, twice in a 2v2, you and your teammate playing the same faction, then you are quite limited, it's especially at the beginning of the game, especially with a faction like Engma. Because, again, Engma doesn't have too many choices to begin the game with. It's not like a Isengard, double Isengard, you know, one can go for the Uruk pit, one can go for the work pit, one can go for the buff, one can go for the debuff. So the amount of power points and the units you can actually choose to begin the game with are quite limited for the Engmar faction at the beginning. That's right, Shanks. Uh, actually, uh, whilst this is all going on, um, Ecthelion taking down three Malon trees from Matty Smirks, uh, and Matty Smirks sitting on just two Malon trees 
um, oh. right now. His command points kept. Is on a lot more. <laughs> and every single time he takes down a Malon tree, it's much bigger percentage loss because he's only got very few Malon trees in the first place. So if every time one gets taken down, um, you know, it's much bigger loss. When Ectelion loses a tree or a mill, it's not as much. Um, but we've got a lot of action here with the Eye of Sauron being used. And the Ilva Zeus as well from the Alvin player. And yeah, that's a massive army here. They're gonna be able to take down one of the one of the two all of the Kingsmen from Imperialist once again. That's the second time already. But during all this time, you know, Exilion is pretty much untouched. He has a great amount of resource income. And yeah, it looks like they will be able to surround. The archers are unprotected. There is only one pikeman unit. And it's he's looking like to get a trample off, but and then there's a mountain troll coming as well. Mountain Trolls, second Hall of the Kingsmen going down as well. Irby oh. getting a great surround on that. And actually with the Trolls coming in to follow up, um, this could be uh, really hard to defend for Imperialists and Ectelion. This Troll refuses to die by the way, look his health guys. <laughs> oh, no, finally he has been taken down. <laughs> uh, yeah, once again, I mean so far Imperialist lost three times his Hall of the Kingsmen in the first five minutes into the game. And this is looking quite good for the Mordor player Irby and his ally, the Alvin player. Um, even though he lost a couple of those Malone trees and he has not that great amount of resource income, but they have a unit advantage and they can keep up the pressure all the time. It's like a, com a perfect combination right there, you know, you have Lorien Morris in the front line, Easter Links doing damage to the structures and then there are so many archers in the back line ready to take down every unit coming from the non-existing Hall of the Kingsmen. <laughs> Yeah, they're really making use of the matchup right now because they're able to get a much bigger variety of units with the Lorien archers and coming from Matty Smokes in combination with the Easterlings and the Orcs um, from Irby and the Trolls. So a lot of variety coming out. Um, this double Angmar pick is suffering and, a little and, bit. And, 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 do, that and you see that. You see that. Ectilion just leveled up both his all of the Kingsmen to level 3. So he's going to try to spam multiple Dark Rangers at once. But the problem is now he's going to lose so many mills um, that I'm really afraid that he won't be able to afford that, you know? It could be a little bit too little too late, you know, Shanks. Um, we've already got trolls on the field. Um, and uh, yeah, I think Matty and Irby have taken command of this game uh, in a significant fashion. Um, and uh, yeah, again, the two Angmar players playing defense. Um, the one saving grace I can see is Imperialist has about five mills on the right hand side that haven't been touched uh he snuck around the back um in the map using the map um and that's where his economy is but i don't know if they can kill all of these troops they're gonna need some kind of uh, long shot fell wind combination there is a drama um, troll as well for the leadership part oh yeah that's again that nice leadership choice. can't get negated tainted land will be used here from the motor player to double buff Rise, for double buff Rise action. The Witch King players making great use of the double buff stack. Um, they've got the leadership from the Drummer Troll this time with the Tainted Land. Earlier it was Eye of Sauron with Warchan. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that that's been a really key factor so far in this game. Yava, thank you so much for the follow, man. Appreciate it. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay, buddy. All right, uh, they are trying to take down the Drummer Troll, which is easier said than done. Another beautiful heal was used from Mephis to keep those units alive and healthy. Uh, Dark Rangers are here, but you know, they are a bit so late. Longshot is incoming, but not being able to deal too much damage because of the double buff. Uh, they That's don't give up, but look at this. Buff. Irby is gathering another big, big army here. He's nicely protected with this battle tower. There is no way of Imperialist being able to push him back any soon. Um, and they are struggling, they are defending all the time, and in the meantime, we're gonna take a look into the current power points and command points. Exilion has 575 command points collected. Five, almost six power points available after Warchan and Felvind. Mephi at the top left side is going for the end smooth. 575 command points available. Seven and a half power points collected after rallying call and heal. The Mordor player Irby at the top right side has 725 command points available. A decent amount of resource income. Eye of Sauron, Tainted Land, and Warchan plus two power points. And then we have the green Engma player Imperialist at the bottom right side. 575 command points because of those mills in the back. Seven and a half power points collected after Felwind and Warchan. So Irby is the you know the MVP in this game so far in terms of command points and power points. So he has a massive lead. 
They just took out the drummer troll with the oh, dark long shots? and Yeah, now there's no Ooh. buff. Longshot comes down, does a little bit of damage there to the Lorian Arches. If he's not um, paying attention, he's gonna lose them all. Oh, he didn't yeah. pay attention. Look how many units nice he lost luck. there. Nice, nice one here from Exilion. Uh, and yeah, look at this. Imperialist has, right now, he's going for a hero. He had around 2,000 resources collected, by the way. He's gonna lose this whole of the Kingsman once again. Oh, Snowbind used. Nice save. Really needed that, actually, yeah. because lose another whole of the Kingsman. Uh, well, that would be really hard to come back from. I mean, um, now I think Erby and also his ally Mephi, they need to ask themselves, okay, how is this possible that, you know, Imperialist is getting all the money again and again and again? So they are, they need to really focus down those mills in the back. They are pretty much untouched all game long. Those four mills, he has five mills actually, giving him a decent amount of resource income and command points, keeping him alive. Thank you so much for the follow. See them. They can't see them because um, Erby's most extended slaughterhouse is out of vision range of uh, the most extended mill from Imperialist. So um, they have no idea that that's there right now. They need to check that spot because um, they've expanded all the way along. Both players, Ectelion and Imperialist. Uh, Ectelion even with a Hall of the Kingsmen <laughs> on the top left-hand side uh, <laughs> um, around the back of his own base. So um, there's a, just a, so many structures around there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the Rice Witching guys need to play the map a little bit better. I mean, and to be honest, I think the experience on this map is kind of, you know, not existing for the players. Because again, this is a really brand new map. No one got used to that, you know, used to play this map before. So I think they are just, you know, using the large area of the map and trying to go for a push. But you need to also play around the side lanes and try Shanks. to... I don't know what's happening, but it looks like uh, BFME2 guys are coming back to, into this game. Uh, ectelion has got a lot of Wolf Riders harassing. Imperialist has got Karsh now, as well as Hualdar. So a couple of heroes coming out, um, and they're in a good position. Um, I would say, I think, uh, could, could swing either way. Or what do you maybe... think about this end strategy hmm, on the left-hand side? He's going to lose his end probably here. Yeah? Never mind, he's actually paying attention. I think it's good. I like it. So you put pressure on him and, you know, try to draw the attention. And give time to Erby. Erby is actually not going for a Harad. He has Haradrim Palace level 3, but I don't see any Haradrim Arches on the field just yet. Uh, Haradrim Arches with Drama Leadership and Warchan are pretty strong. Okay, that's oh, gonna wow. be a big push here now. Double buff Huge again. Rally for but beautiful Felvins. But there is no follow up, that's the problem. We need to combine that, that kind of, of stuff there. with the long shot. Yeah. He's just trying to buy time for Karsh to get back, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Karsh just level one. Raw we'll ability see. was used from the drama troll. Uh, the army from Imperialist is chilling around this area, being actually idle, not doing anything, not going for a push, but also not moving to the backside. Now he's going to go for a push. He might be able to take down this level three slaughterhouse, though. Let's see. Karsh is here now, level one. At the same time, Engma player Iktilun has to commit now to this end because his fortress is getting lower and lower. Yeah, and another end is coming. The end and he's not even, you know, giving it a bruise. <laughs> nah, um, you need pikemen or some, you know, melee units. The archers are not gonna, you know, be able to deal damage to them. Oh, really nice move by Matty, um, picking the right time to get the end, and uh, could be the game-winning push right here from Matty Smokes. I mean, he has not even the Snowbind ready. We are talking about Ectelion, that's why his ally, Imperial, is gonna use the Snowbind for his ally. Uh, and he's gonna go for the White Special Summon. So, White Special Summon is gonna be ready. And in the meantime, I think um, Ectelion has now the power points for the Snowbind, so they can use it again on the Fortress to keep it alive. We have Heal Trolls on the field. They are quite strong, we know that. The ends, they need to disengage, but there is a huge backline. Entrading Miss will be used from him, oh, and wow. Longshot is incoming. Felvin is, Felvin is available for Ectelion, by the way, but he is not using it just yet. The Snowbind is gonna run off soon, and that means Ectelion has to pick it now. If he doesn't Here pick it go. now... Here okay. comes a big fight, Janks. We've got White Summon, we've got Karsh getting in top of the Ents. Um, so throwing is going everything down. at this uh, Elf Lame strategy <laughs> and... Mouth uh, of Sauron is also here from Erby, by the way, boys. One end was able to get away. Fiesta here happening in the midst 
of the Elven player. We don't see anything. <laughs> okay. Heal throws are quite tanky, we know that. Mouth of Sauron was able to get to the backline into the Rangers, taking down the, taking them down. He's gonna be it's gonna be level 4 pretty soon. That's gonna unlock the Zaubt ability. It's an active debuff. Karsh in the meantime is putting in some nice work, he's being level 3. Mouth of Sauron has to be careful though. But the Alvin player was a really able... interesting choice, but um, yeah, they haven't got enough to take out this elf army. And one end is alive. That's why he needs to use Snowbind once again. Luckily, they have, you know, a double Snowbind. They can delay it a couple, couple of seconds. But they need to take oh. down this end. But there's a huge army, and hmm, I don't see a way, you know, for the double Engma team to take the, this army down from the Alvin player. Well, the has got a Dark Iron Forge hidden on the far left-hand side of the map, and he's got two or three now Troll Stone Throws. Um, so I don't know what he's planning to do with that. But um, look this neutral creep. Shot. Look this neutral creep. <laughs> 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 he was taking down one of the <laughs> Troll Stone Throwers almost. Okay, it looks like he's gonna go for the base trait, maybe. Or get into the backline of the structures and take it down. But this units, this Troll Stone Throwers, they don't have enough protection. Matty pinging these troll stone throwers. Um, and uh, has he got the ice shot upgrade? Doesn't look like it. Um, nope, he so didn't. I don't know if this is going to be enough only level for one. Ectelion, but it was a nice try. Nice try, but too late. We have, we have Treebeard also here. The daddy of the ants. Gonna smash those uh, troll stone throwers from, uh, from the melee range. And the damage output is not going to be that great because they don't have the upgrades. Oh wow, look at that tree bit damage, OP. Yeah, he's hitting, <laughs> one hitting those uh, Troll Stone Throwers, by the way. Wow. Nice I mean, the Fortress is down now. <laughs> Forts are so far. Fortress from Ectilion has been taken down, by the way, boys. That means he can't make use of his power points anymore. He can't rebuild it, <clears throat> he can't remake it as well, he doesn't have the money for that. Um, yeah, I would have liked to see um, the ice arrows from Ectelion instead of the troll stone throwers. Um, the ice arrows may be a slightly better answer to the ends. Um, and uh, when he's already got a lot of dark rangers in his army, upgrading them is only going to help uh, against these trolls, against these ends. Um, I don't yeah. think that the ice shot is going to increase your damage output against the ends that much. Uh, it's it's gonna be a bit better, obviously, right? But it's not gonna be as effective as fire arrow upgrade, for example, on the other units. Because I don't yeah, think that ends true. are weak against ice arrows, to be honest. Yeah, if you think about it, actually, um, fire kills trees, right? And yeah. uh, trees do fine in the winter <laughs> when it snows. So. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty nice game. I'm really liking this map uh, as well. Um, I think it's got a lot of options with the kind of outside parts of the map as well as the um, kind of attention in the middle with the outpost. I think there's, you can either choose to take money from the outside or take money from the middle. Um, yeah, uh, quite interesting to see if this map is getting played a lot more, uh, how the strategies develop and evolve over time. Um, yeah, guys, um, that's going to be the game. And actually for the first time in the series, Rise of the Witch King will have the upper hands. And they will be only one win away from winning the best of seven series. But we have now Sauron back and he's ready to replace Imperialist. Uh, and that means after this game we're gonna go to Game Ranger, pick him up. Because he originally was signed up actually for this tournament with Ectelion together. And they might have a better chance. Because we know, you know, Sauron always picks the man of the West faction. And he was always in every game doing a great job, you know. And I feel like the synergy between Ectelion and uh, Imperialist is not as great as between Sauron and Ectelion. That's my opinion. Especially yeah, now then you can also Shanks. two different factions, you know, Man of the West and Angma is a great combination. Good, again, good and evil combined are, pow are more powerful in my opinion than only evil or only good. I and definitely agree with you, Shanks. I think the double Angma suffered a little bit to uh, some of the unit variety from the Rise of the Witch King team this game. Um, and, uh, you know, even though they tried to, a few different things with the Kash, uh, one player going for Kash, one player going for Dark Rangers, and um, Troll Stone Throwers, it wasn't enough. Um, and, uh, yeah, really nice game by Rise of the Witch King there. On and I think, you know, the, the game actually kind of 
we actually saw what ha what's gonna happen at the beginning of the game. Remember the very first push from the Alvin player Mephis, you know, with the rallying call and you know, Irby was using Eye of Sauron on those units for the double buff. Remember how fast they were able to take down the whole of the Kingsman from Ectilion at the very beginning of the game. Yes, Ectilion had the unit, I mean, resource advantage, but it doesn't help you if you can't use the money to get units on the field. So the very first push was actually quite successful and from this moment on actually just snowballed in favor of the Rise of the Witch King team. And let's start with the game number six, guys, on the map, Anfalas 2. We will have Engmar and Men against Elves and Mordor. Hmm. When Sauron left, he was 2-1 up, BF me too. Um, and then uh, with Imperialist coming in, I think, um, they lose two games in a row. So we'll see if Sauron can get his revenge now um, on this new map, Amphalus 2. Yeah, with Mordor on, a, on the side from Irby again, like in the previous game at the top right side, his ally, the green Elven player, Mephis Mirx, on the top left. Their opponents at the bottom left is the bluish... Engmar player Exelion and his ally at the bottom right side is the blue man of the west player Sauron. I'm actually curious if you know Exelion gonna go for the same start again with multiple mills before the Hall of the Kingsman. But this game is gonna be the deciding game if BFME, if BFME 2 guys loses that one, they're gonna lose the series. But uh, there is you know another series gonna happen in a couple of days uh, in which Irby and Sola is gonna play against Exelion and Sauron once again. Uh, this be is best of seven. Shanks. Um, I hope Ectelion doesn't go for six mils again because this map is small and it's very close uh, to your enemy. Um, Matty with an early um, Elven Barracks and uh, could be getting another rush off like he did in the last game. Um, so uh, yeah, that could be the strategy. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens, man. I'm so excited. Uh, Sa <laughs> Sauron uh, is back. And uh, yeah, the last time they were taking advantage. So um, hopefully we'll get a lot of teamwork uh, with this map being small as well. Um, they don't like yeah, this map you... though. I mean, he doesn't what like do this, map. this map. Do you like this map, Shanks? What do you think? Um, Actually, no, to be honest, because there are just so many random structures, you know, in the middle, like, like for example, at the spot from Sauron, you see that's Elvin Barracks kind of thing, right? It blocks a potential farm, you know, he could go for a farm right there. And also here and stuff, I don't know. I, I've never seen this map before, it's nice for me also this tournament, uh, this this challenge, I mean, because I get to see maps I've never seen before. Uh, just like in 1v1, there are some specific maps. By the way, we have a troll cage delete here from Irby, guys. Into the mountain troll. So that's gonna be Fiesta, because he has Golden Knights on the field. Troll's gonna be great against this start from Men of the West, isn't it? Because yeah. uh, there's no pikes <laughs> and no arches, so um, yeah, this troll not gonna be able to deal with this troll for a while, and uh, actually he could be getting a lot of damage. Already approaching the first farm from Sauron in the bottom right, um, so uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how this game's gonna go, but it looks like obi has got the upper hand already. Yeah, but look, he's gonna lose those uh, slaughterhouses in exchange. There was a smart move here from Sauron. Okay, you know what? We're gonna just go for a trade. He's gonna potentially be even able to take down the barracks. He needs now the. He has to force. He was forced to, you know, cancel the building. And in the meantime, um, I don't know what happened there. It looks like, you know, the Elven player wanted to creep the troll, but then he changed his mind. We have once yeah, again just going for the rush, just going straight for the rush now with the Elven Mithlon Sentry and the Lorian Warrior. Um, going straight for one of Ectelion's mills. He yeah. can actually just see the mill on the left hand side as well because of the vision from the signal fire. Um, so that could come into play a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, Matty getting a nice rush off again against Ectelion. Yeah, but just because, you know, Ectelion once again go went for the greedy start <clears throat> and made multiple mills once again, you know, before he went for the Hall of the Kingsman. And yeah, Mephi is actually adapting to the to the playstyle from Ectelion and knows what he's gonna do, reads him like a book and punishes him at the beginning of the game. So very well done here from the Albion player now in the past three previous games, they were able to win. Remember, the score was 2-1 for BFME 2. And they won now two games in a row, the Rise of the Witch King team. This troll is level two and a half, Shanks, so it's done quite a lot of damage already. Um, finally being fended off by some Rohan Spearmen. Um, but yeah, it's managed to get a lot of damage done. 
Um, and a, a great start there by Irby with the troll delete. I uh, wasn't expecting that one. Um, on a small map, it can get punished by a counter rush with pikes, but it looks like Irby's managed to make it through this early game um, in a pretty good um, way, you know, on the Mordor faction, which can be difficult at times. And now we're gonna have a lot of orcs coming from the Mordor player Irby. And for me, it looks like that the man of the West player is not ready to defend this. I mean, he has Gondor Knights coming now, so they can go for a trample. The troll is, you know, still pressuring, taking down another farm here. He's gonna hit level 3 after that. Beautiful trample, but the pressure is real just because of the troll kit start. Which kinda got, you know, which kinda was a blind counter to, to the stable start from the Man of Twist player. It was a little bit. Um, no way to spy with Angmar and Men of the West. So, um, you know, when, when you pick these factions, then uh, you can get uh, surprised by something like a troll start. Um, but uh, what do you think? Um, looks like Ecthelion with a, a big attack against Maddy Smirks on the left hand side. Um, takes down a Malon tree. And uh, Maddy Smirks with only two Malon trees. Right but now. I think uh, Sauron will need some help. You know, Sauron will need some help. Because he is actually not being able to put any pressure on Mortal player Irby. And Irby is just getting all the time he needs. And this troll is MVP so far, for sure. At the beginning of the game. Especially in the early game stages. He's doing so much Timmy work. The troll. Yeah, Timmy the troll is level 3 now. I'm gonna be able to heal Almost level well. 4. Almost level 4. <laughs> yeah. Um, he can find an ult to eat for the healing as well. Yeah. Um, so we might see him use that. Uh, but he will heal automatically on his own, just because he's level 3. Um, I think those trolls get the healing at level 2. I might be wrong. Um, they get but... on level 3, I think. The, you know, the mountain trolls get on level 3 and the cave trolls get on level 2, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay, yeah. That would make sense. Because um, the mountain troll can also heal himself. Um, but a well coming up now and, uh, yeah, playing defense for Sauron and Ecthelion, but they've been here before, so, uh, yeah. So, what Irby think, will have Who also war chance. the early game to Irby? Yeah, I would say that just because of the troll cage start, he was actually able to, you know, win the skirmishes against the Man of the West player Sauron, and that's what Mordor player wants. He wants to have a secured early game, you know, that's the very weakness of the Mordor faction, the beginning of the game. In a small map like this, I was really, you know, kind of, Curious about the choice of Irby, why he would go for the Mordor faction in a small map like this against Men of the West who can actually go for the attack at the beginning. But because, you know, of this, you know, there were many things which were not expected, I would say, from Sauron. So he was not expecting such a start from Irby. Irby was not expecting a uh, cave start, uh, you know, a cavalry start here from the Men of the West player. And Blinds countered that. He was able to defend himself quite nicely. This troll is almost level 4, you know was delaying the barracks by smashing the building, was forcing him to cancel the barracks, that again delete the pikemen, that again delete the chance to defense. So everything went in favor of Irby. I don't know if everything was planned, but it was. it's looking good for the Elvin and Mordor team right now. It's looking good, but look on the left hand side, Ectelion has the two Hall of Kings men level 3. Um, so he has been teching up this whole time, getting into the Dark Ranger tech, uh, should be able to deal with the troll quite shortly um, and will be a great choice against Mordor. Um, you can long shot the orcs in you know one Felwyn long shot combo that type of thing and uh, turn the game right around so um, it's definitely not over these guys not going to give up they're both um, BFME2 pros some of the best that we've ever seen uh, in BFME2 and uh, yeah they've seemed to have made the transition pretty nicely to Rise of the Witch King um, the first Dark Range is coming across uh, right now to help deal with this troll I mean, even if this troll is gonna go down, and it looks like it, he's, oh, never mind, not even close. <laughs> Ooh, not even close, baby. <laughs> not even close. Uh, but I think he done his job, you know. He did so much damage, and he was actually the, the only reason why Irby has such a great, uh, you know, state right now in this game. Number six between Bifimi 2 against, against Rise of the Witch King team. Um, and alone the, the, the pressure he was dealing and the attention he was drawing was actually insane. Irby having... Almost 5 power points collected now, 475 command points available after having Warchant and Eye of Sauron. Elvin player is going for an attack at the bottom left side. He's gonna be able to take down one of those mills, which was almost, you know, level 2. Uh, Mephi has around 10 power points collected, can go for the miss, 
pretty soon. That means they're gonna have the double buff advantage, plus they will have the debuff on the enemy units. And Sauron... That's gonna be very big, because Hualda is just taken from Ecthelion, and that leadership is totally negated by an Elven Mist. So, uh, yeah, that could be a really important pickup here for Maddie's Max. Big attack on the right-hand side as well with the Troll and the Orcs coming down on the archery range. Um, tainted land used as well. Uh, so, yeah, a huge attack from Erby on Sauron right now. Um, how are they going to hold this off, Shanks? The Felvins, maybe? Let's see if they can actually take down the Troll. I don't see. So. I don't think so. The Troll is still quite healthy. That is Waldo though, and Stroll might be getting trapped, trapped here. The Rangers, they will be finally, finally able to take down the very first Mountain Troll from RV. But RV on the other side was able to take down the Archer range. That means no more Rangers from the Man of the West player Sauron any soon. He's rebuilding that, but he needs to buy the upgrade once again. And They're in the just meantime... They're hanging on, aren't they? They're just hanging on. He's got a well, which is damaged. He's got a couple of rangers, which are damaged, and some Gondor soldiers. Ecthelion scrambling to get back, having to fight into this double buff elf unit. Yeah. Um, but they just managed to hold on. Um, but the next attack is coming Hurry, soon uh, as well. There's uh, Erby picking up a goth mog on the backside. And uh, yeah, but uh, for now... The game is not over, um, we're still hanging on, and uh, maybe even the longer this game goes on, um, you know, Angmar can scale very nicely into mid-game, Men of the West scaling nicely as well. Um, definitely not over, definitely not. But Men of the West player is being in a really, really, really rough situation, guys. Uh, he is sitting only on 300 command points right now. Um, went for the archer oh, range, yeah. has stables, I mean, has a lot of, pro uh, you know, production buildings, but he can't use them at the same time. He can't make units that much. He's gonna be either command points capped, or he's gonna run out of money. He has 10 power points and has now the Lone Tower special summon. That's gonna buy some time. Uh, but Mouth of Sauron is here and Gothmog is here as well. That means those units, they will have leadership from the Gothmog, those orcs at least. And will this tower be enough to hold them back? That's the question. It's, it's looking a bit voice. shaky. Um, on the left-hand side, there was a builder kill as well, XD. Um, Ecthelion losing a builder, but uh, and, uh, and also a mill to the uh, small rush from Maddie's Mercs. Um, the units will be held off, um, but yeah, XD builder kill. Uh, we don't miss a single one, huh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's looking rough. I mean, um, Sauron has got absolutely no level 2 farms and uh, yeah he's pretty much out of the game right now um, doesn't have many units either l2 goes thank you so much for the follow man appreciate it and welcome to the stream all right uh, mouth of sauron is level one so wasn't able to get any experience just yet uh erby putting keeps putting pressure all the time with those oryx and easter links and now the Elven units are moving forward as well. Man of the West doesn't have anything to defend himself right now. He needs to retreat with this couple of units he has left. So he definitely needs the help from his ally Ectelion. Ectelion on the other side is going for a push. So the units from Ectelion are far, far away. Uh, Bionicle, thank you so much for the follow, man. Appreciate it. And welcome to the stream. For a BFME 2 player, he plays Engma well. Yeah, true, true. But the problem is that his ally is getting run over all the time now, Sauron. From the beginning of the game, kind of unlucky starts here. If he would went, if he would start with the barracks and maybe potentially the pikemen, the scheme would look so much so different. You know, even after the troll di died, like two minutes ago, he's for me still the MVP of this game. Oh yeah, Erby with a masterclass this game on a troll delete start. It's a small okay. map. Um, Sauron with the stable start. But look um, at this now, Angma, yeah, Angma is going for a for a push, guys. Um, Orc special summon will be used, and he will be able to take down multiple Malon trees here. One of them is almost level 3, and that might be the attack he needs. But the problem is, Man of the West has nothing, absolutely nothing left but a fortress. He has nothing left anymore, guys. Barely I mean, any if, units around. Malon trees at the back, that would be really nice, and it would put Matty Smokes in the same position as Sauron. Um, whereby they have no Malon trees. XD Builder, ooh, nearly taken down. Just manages to save on the top left. Um, but uh, yeah, it's still looking very, very good for the Rise of the Witch King team, I would say. Yeah. 
And we have here Morgomir fighting against Mouth of Sauron. Mouth of Sauron is taking way too much damage, but he's getting outnumbered. And Morgomir from the Engmar player, Ecterium will be taken down. Both heroes going down. <laughs> um, I mean, you take that trade if you're Erby. Um, but I didn't really need to lose Mouth of Sauron right there. But look, this is what um, Sauron is doing, guys. You see that? He has a tower here, Barak's in the back, and he's going for the siege. He's going for the trebuchets again. He's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to give up my fortress side. I'm just going to build some towers and wall-ups to protect my fortress so you can stick it down. And I will build more stuff around this area. But the problem is that Irby has also cut us on the fields and they are already sieging this lone tower. I mean, it's a really good, really good shout by uh, Sauron. He's saying, yeah, basically, I'm just going to go for this strategy again. It worked for me in games one and two uh, where they were able to take a you know a two one lead uh, using this strategy um goes for it again uh, manages to take down the mordor catapult as well so um yeah it could be working a third oh, time we have we'll lindon horse archer units now coming from the elven player beautiful trample there from matty smoke oh nice one he keeps doing that all the time and that's beautiful that they are really good units they can go for a trample like all the other calf units Dealing great amount of damage, but they can also be arranged, so you can fight them against spikes, you can fight them against heroes, but also really useful against other enemy cavalry units. The tower has been taken down, there is no way of defending this area, he's gonna demolish everything, and I think that's gonna be the game number 6. And I can't see him coming back from this situation anymore. I mean, it looks like the dark ranges are gonna go forward, but they, are, they have no protection guys, no pikemen around. And the, the army is massive here from Mordor team. He's yeah. just demolishing every single farm and has right now 200 command points, zero units on the field. <laughs> Almost no <laughs> oh, money God. left. Oh, yeah, you can't win a war if you have no soldiers. And yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah Erby and Maddy Smirks looking very, very strong in this game. Um, Erby has got a lot of level three slaughterhouse as well with the industry it's had. Uh, for a while and so uh, yeah he's definitely got the massive advantage here i'd be very surprised if ectelion and sauron are able to come back um but we have seen comebacks before in rise of the witch king and in bfb2 also but so, i don't, i didn't uh, see a comeback <laughs> yet from a guy who has 200 command points and no money you know <laughs> i mean that would be new i know it's, that would it's be looking new. bad <laughs> it's looking bad <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, but they're not giving up, so yeah, not giving uh, they're up. not calling it GG yet. I mean, fight until the very end. You have no nothing to lose at this point. If you give up, you're going to lose it anyway. So you can just try to fight until the very end. Just buy some time and hope that the enemy is going to make some mistakes. Irby OP, yeah, I agree. Irby, Irby is for sure the, you know, the man of the match here in this game. Definitely. Irby did a great job played brilliantly didn't he it's hard with Mordor on a small map as well and uh, he made it look easy you know yeah uh, one troll getting to level four um, with the troll delete strategy and then able to follow it up with some um, constant pressure Loads oh there's one unit remaining here from Sauron by the way it's Borom yeah <laughs> oh, okay nice the captain of Gonzo the last man standing he has to pick heal to keep him alive on the bright side you know he can't for he can't forget about him because there is nothing else he can micro that's all, that's all he has. So oh, all his attention is around Boromir Bor right now. Oh, Boromir, run! <laughs> Boromir, run! He's using the fury. It's like a like a black market carnage from Lourdes, you know, the fury. <laughs> wow, that Gothmog is level six. Actually, yeah. the Iron Hand is gonna completely negate the Boromir Horn of Gondor. True. Uh, true. As well, so even if Boromir is getting to level two, um, it's not gonna matter. Uh, Maybe he needs to go because... for the white creep at the bot side and then try to get the money, you know? I'm talking about the man of the West player. He went for, he's going for the barracks without any farms. He needs, <laughs> he needs something. He's just got one lone tower right now uh, with nothing inside. Um, catapult's going to be Put Boromir inside it. <laughs> Put Boromir inside it. <laughs> Boromir, yeah. Captain of Gondor. Um, I've never seen him with a bow, an arrow, but um, yeah. yeah. I mean, he can, he can do it. I mean, Aragorn, for example, can also do it in the Each of the Ring mode, you know? He can use bow and, uh, you know, be a, be a archer, pretty much. <laughs> well, Boromir's brother is a good archer. That's Faramir, right? Yeah. Um, he can go on horse, and he can also be an archer in this game. Um, so maybe Faramir teaching Boromir some tricks, right? <laughs> True. Um, but I, I would also say, you know, that this game could have 
went all the other ways. I mean, it, it would be a much better game to watch if Sauron would have expected the troll. I mean, no one can expect that, right? But he was not ready to defend. And then the major mistake for me was what actually changed the game and what put, more, what put the Man of the West player really behind was um, not the fact that he sent his Gondor Knights forward to try to take down some of those slaughterhouses in exchange, but the way he was trying to build the barracks in front of the troll, and the troll was just smashing the barracks in the building progress, right? And then he was forced to cancel the building, and that cost him so much time that he was only able after multiple minutes to actually get some pikemen and counter that troll. In the meantime, this troll was devastating everything. He took so many farms oh, yeah. from the Man of the West player. Horn of Kondo does nothing, as you know. Because of Govmok. Or no, Govmok is not around. Never mind. They are being stunned for a really short time. Oh, that giant summon is Ectelions and it just gets taken out immediately by the Eagle summon from Matt. I don't know about this giant special summon right there when there are so many archers around. Now the Eagles yeah. can finish up this fortress easily. Oh, that man. is a catapult in the back. It's gonna be GG right now. And, it's gonna be GG. Uh, yeah, the Eagle summon, really nice. I think Ectelion had no choice but to summon the giants right there. I mean, um, this attack is just so big. The damage was done already. Um, Irby and Matty Smokes putting on an absolute masterclass this game on a small map. Um, I think Sauron as well, the Men of the West player, getting a little bit unlucky, but. You know, with a cavalry start as Men of the West on a small map, you're always going to take that risk. Um, and uh, yeah, just loses the rock, paper, scissors, I think, in the early game. Not able to recover, but, you know, a clinical game from Irby and Matty uh, taking this series to a 4-2 lead for the Rise of the Witch King team. Yeah, and I'm not going to lie, I feel like that um, BFME 2 team was kind of handicapped because they had to switch the players all the time. Remember the first games were, you know, where Sauron and Imperialist then Ectilion came back for one game and then Sauron had to leave and then, you know, Imperialist had to play two games then afterwards with uh, Ectilion. Now Sauron is back again. So maybe they couldn't, you know, get the synerg synergy between each other and before they can get used to it, to play together as a team in a 2v2. You know, one of them has to leave and then we get another one to replace all the time. Yeah. Maybe that's one of those uh, problems and that's hopefully not going to happen for the next matches they're going to have yeah. between uh, against Sauron lot. and Ectilion against Irby and Solas next time. They had the momentum, didn't they, when they were 2-1 one up yeah. uh, and then, uh, yeah, Sauron had to go. Um, how would you feel about another game if the players want to play it right now? Uh, we could try the final map just for a show match. Uh, I don't know if the guys want to do that. We could ask them. Do you we have time, them, chance? Yeah could ask them I've, i can stick around so uh you know i just want to see some more rise of the witch king action as always i uh, love this game and uh, these players are putting on some great performance right now let's ask them if they want to but i need to make the scoreboard up to date again so it's four two in total now guys uh for the rise of the witch king it would be a shame to lose in your own game. <laughs> so, I mean, well deserved. They have a, they had a great comeback. They were 2-1 behind, but then they managed to win three games in a row. And the match, the man, you know, the man of the match definitely is Irby in the last two games with the Moro faction. Um, even though Mephi had a, always a solid game, but maybe they had to keep it like it is, you know. They changed the... For example, at the beginning, uh, it was always Irby against Ectelion. They used to play at the same sides. And they used to, you know, put a lot of pressure on Irby at the beginning. Remember, right? So they used to play like a 2v1 situation in which both players were grouping and focusing down Irby. And that, that, was, that was working, you know? That was working. Yeah. And then they ch think Shen, changed something, um... which was kind of not necessary, I think. Irby playing great in the last game. I think, Shanks, we can get another game. Uh, maybe on Udun or something like this, if you want to host up, or I can host. Okay, let's do it. Nice. It's um, going to be the last game for me, though, because I'm going to go eat after this one. I didn't ha eat anything just yet today, so I'm getting hungry, guys. <laughs> Got to feed... My works feed are the hungry. Troll. Feed the troll. <laughs> All right, Looks that's... like meat's back on the menu, boys. Um, who chose last map? Me. Guys, what map you want to see, guys, in the chat? Let me know. <laughs> oh, 
Hucklands. Ja, oder die Headfalls. Never back lands. What do you guys think about Udun? Is it a good thing? Yep. I think Udun is fine. I think the BF Me 2 guys will know that map as well. Um, it's nice and big, uh, complete opposite to the last map. So it would be uh, maybe nice to see Udun. Um, there's also Plains of Rohan uh, that we haven't seen yet in this series, which is also a common 2v2 map. Um, I don't mind either way. Um, who is for Plains of Rohan and who is for uh, Udun, guys? Let me know. Udun, Udun, Yuna Machuna, <laughs> Plains of Rohan, please. Plains of Rohan? Okay. Who is, is everyone fine with Plains of Rohan? Oh, some votes coming in for Udun now. D's, Daryl, and Gray009. Okay. <laughs> Plains of Rohan, pl Plains or Udun. No Plains Do of you Rohan. Have the have the other Udun map, Shanks. Wait a second, let's wait let's wait a second guys. The game number seven is all about to begin. Planes of Rohan it is going to be this time. The first time we're gonna see this map today. In the 2v2 between those players. Udun for virgins. There is absolutely nothing wrong to be a virgin, I think. Okay, so we have a men mirror on the right hand side. With Erby and Sauron. Uh, Erby's played this matchup already today um, in the 1v1 game and uh, did really, really well in that. So um, he clearly knows the matchup very, very well. Yeah, Man of the West, Mirror actually at the bottom right side. Sauron always picks Man of the West so far in every game he was participating uh, in this 2v2 challenge. And on the left side, we will have Elves against Engmar once again. So Ectelion only picked one time random in which he got the Dwarf faction today. But all the time, he's, you know, besides that one game, he was always picking the Engma faction, which is really interesting. And Mephi plays exclusively all games long the OP Elves. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Elves OP, man. Elves OP. And yeah, again, um, the same starts here for the Engma player, boys. We're going to have four mills coming up once again. I mean, you know, Ectelion just doesn't care. He's like, I need money, guys. You know, I need money, I need cash, I need resources. But it looks like the Elven player sees it coming and he's going for, again, our early barracks. And he can go for the creep here, by the way, with the pikemen. And he can also do the same thing what he did in the past three games. Uh, but it looks like this time he's not going to go for the Lorian warriors. After the pikemen, he's going to go for the Lorian archers instead. So... This is a great map for this kind of start. You get your pikes to level 2 with the war glare. Um, there's even a troll as well. So, um, yeah, plenty of money to be taken from the creeps. Allows you to get, a, you know, early Haldir, something like this. Um, which could be super useful in the matchup. Um, so, yeah, I really like the start by Matty. The one drawback uh, that we're seeing on this style is that he's not going to be able to get his first rush off work. as quickly. So maybe that will give some time for Ictelion to, uh, you know, get some units on the yeah. field. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, so far he's untouched, which, which is really good. I think the first push is going to happen very delayed. That means he's going to have time to build up an army potentially. And we have now some of those Gondor soldiers moving forward from Sauron to the side of the Elven player. Elven player in the meantime was able to creep. The war player at the top side. Yeah, not sure about this start from Sauron. Um, actually going for the creep with his second unit. Um, and going for the double with his first unit. So could lose a few things at home. Already one farm going down. Um, and yeah, could be a second farm going down as well. Uh, actually, it looks like Ectelion's coming over to defend him. Oh, really interesting. Did nice you see one. that? Wolf nice Rider one. Summon, yeah? Nice one. Just in time. He's also using Warchant. The builder oh, has to great. be careful, though. Great teamwork um, from Ectelion, man. So what they, what they basically did is Sauron was sending a soldier to the Elven player to pressure the pikemen. He was also using the Rallying Call offensively. While he was getting attacked from Erby, and that's why, you know, his ally, the Engma player, Ectelion, was forced to send some units. The Wolf Riders were just in time. But Erby was still able to take down one of those farms. And he has now some Gondor Knights joining the fight. And that's gonna be pretty much the same case also for the blue Man of the West player, Sauron, at the bottom right side. 
Shanks, Aethelion is untouched in this early game, so is he going to be able to capitalize on the eco start that he's got? The sixth mil come up now for Angmar, and a nice big attack over on Erby's base. Um, should be able to take down that uh, original farm by the barracks as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think this is a great start actually for the BFMB2 guys on this map. And we have already the upgrades coming up for the Hall of the Kingsmen, you know, from Actinion at the bottom left side. Uh, so far, he actually was always doing double Call of the Kingsman and upgrading both of them to level 3, which is kind of interesting. That's something I don't see that quite often. Normally, even if you have multiple Hall of the Kingsman, only one is getting upgraded to, to level 3. Uh, but he was trying to spam those Dark Rangers from both at the same time, which is kind of questionable, if you ask me. I mean, they are quite, quite expensive, right? So you need to have a thousand all the time to make two of them at the same time. Yeah, he really needs a second Hall of the Kingsmen right now. When you upgrade that Hall of the Kingsmen, it stops your unit production for some time. And uh, not having a second one means you can't make anything. Uh, so, yeah, he hasn't got many units on the field. Um, Erby and Matty have, I think, slightly more units right now. Um, is that Haldir? Yeah, it's Haldir. <laughs> Great. And we have also the Troll involved in getting upgraded to level 2. That means we're going to potentially see some uh, heal Trolls and or Snow Trolls. I feel like Snow Trolls might be a great choice, actually, against this we have our orders. Yes, Archer super Beast uh, army. Build order. Um, Ecthelion really uh, doing some new things, bringing some new ideas to Rise of the Witch King right now. Um, we haven't seen this build at all in any recent games uh, from Angmar. And uh, yeah, just showing that actually anything is possible. Um, there's a lot we can learn from uh, guys like this who are, you know, super pro in BFME 2. Um, bringing their eyes here to rise the witch king. I mean, to be honest, the last three games, it's uh, he's doing some different stuff, but they might not work, you know. <laughs> so that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, unfortunately, they are not working. So I mean, he's getting punished all the time. Unlike in this game, he's not getting touched so far, so his meals are pretty much untouched all the time. He's going for the snow trolls, which is really nice. Uh, there are some pikemen on the field, but not too many. Hildir is level three now. Once he's level five, the leadership is gonna be unlocked. And Irby is going for the attack, boys. Nice trample, actually, not getting oh, punished for that. Beautiful trample, yeah. How did he do that? He got the flank damage as well. Yeah. Um, Very well done, actually. I think they were... I, kind of unlucky for Irby, not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, good micro, man. Uh, I mean, it's a neutral host, so no advantage gained from, um, you know, so Sauron being on host, something like this. Uh, so, yeah, that was an amazing trample there. Wow. And I think he's gonna still lose one farm, but that could be, you know, much more effective, obviously. And now we're gonna have... Oh, be, be careful with the snow trolls. You don't want to trample into the pikemen. They might be able to take down this mill, though. Um, that's gonna force, if nothing else, to make the, you know, to make more pikemen for the Elven player, I mean. To counter those snow trolls. He's going for the second barracks. And we have now two all of the Kingsmen. One of them is level 3, one of them is only level 1. That's the way to go, I think. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I mean, it looks like, you know, the Rise of the Witch King guys are in control right now, but that's only because Ecthelion has been teching up so much. I mean, he's teching up into Snow Trolls, teching up into Dark Rangers now. Um, and we have some Tower that, Guards, guys. <laughs> oh, nice. And Galadrim uh, Warriors. Oh, wow. From, from, the, the, inn. from the inn. That's quite nice. I mean, we don't see them quite often. They cost 400 each. I don't know about their cost efficiency. I've never seen them being used too many times. But uh, they are pretty much similar to the Elven uh, units from Battle for Middle-earth 1. They are also able to, you know, switch between bow and sword. Oh, yeah. And Glorfindel is here. Glorfindel, Haldir on the map. Um, the health, elf hero spam coming in hot. Um, is that a builder getting taken down as well? XD? Yes, it is. Oh no, the builders. They <laughs> hurt. But the snow trolls, though. Snow, snow trolls! trolls. Very effective in this. Oh, Take nice one. Archers. I like it. He killed every archer right there, by the way. And Glorfindel is only level 2. So he doesn't have the bleed or purity just yet, but he's gonna get it. It's, you know, he just needs to stand still and fight all the time. There we go, level 3 unlocked, but he's taking way too much damage. Is heal ability available? That's gonna be the question. Yes, heal, which was already used. Oh, now he needs to run, he needs to run. I mean, he can also stand still maybe, because of Blade of Purity. It's, you know, doubling his armor pretty much. But yeah, I mean, Elvin player has 600 command points collected. 
7 power points after heal and rallying call. On the other side, Ectelion has around 10 power points collected, 600 command points, Warchant is on cooldown. We have Erby, the man of the west play at the top right side, 8 power points collected, 610 command points available. And was building an offensive statue in the middle of the map. And just camping right now in front of the base of the blue man of the west player, Sauron. Sauron has 8 power points collected and 425 command points available only. He's being unfortunately command points kept. So can't make more units. In the meantime, we have the Orc special summon from Ectelion. Yeah, taking down that Malon tree on the left hand side. Nice pick up there for Ectelion. Um, Maybe. Also drives Matty back into his own base. You'll see these Orcs run around, do a bit of damage, I really annoy Matty. Um, it gives Ectelion time to send his troops over to the right hand side uh, and give a little bit of help to his ally Sauron, who is. Uh, under a little bit of pressure right now. Uh, the most the funny thing is that uh, the Man of the West player Irby has more Elven units on the field than his Elven ally, uh, <laughs> Mephis. Who is, who is the real Elf, bro? <laughs> wow, that's how good Irby is. Uh, he can just make more Elves than his ally. He's not even playing Elves, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, oh, but man. the tower is going to be helpful. Lone Tower special summon will be also used this time. It's from Irby, though, offensively. He has also Galadrian warriors inside of that. He's committing to the tower. He has soldiers and tower guards. They should be able to take it down slowly but surely. As Sauron is losing another builder. Oh wow, Erby flexing right now. Um, you just see the difference in the build order there with Erby getting his archers oh, from the in coming. and Sauron getting his archers from the archery range. Uh, it means that Erby can um, kind of get these tower guards up and uh, yeah, it's just a really nice combination. And back at home, um, he's going to be in a great spot. Trebuchet. Uh, siege works coming out, also a marketplace for Erby, so he's in a great position right here. Um, the man of the West player Sauron this time went for the arrow volley, by the way, and unfortunately the Angmar player didn't have the power points by then to unlock the Felvet. I think if they can actually survive long enough for the next arrow volley being available, and they combine that with the Felvet from the Angmar player, they can deal massive damage. They That's can actually one-shot almost everything, and we have seen this already, I think it was in the game number 2 or 3. The one arrow volley play with the stun from the Golden Arrow of Haldir, in which, of course, Mephi oh. was the MVP. He changed the outcome of the game with just one play, which made Imperialist quit the game immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Imperialist just said GG after that, it was really funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, they definitely need a big uh, long-shot Felwyn combination in this game, because, um, you know, they're definitely playing defense. Um, and, you know, that's one of the powers that can really swing a game. Um, so, yeah, they just need to put it to use. They've got, they can get long shots from the Dark Rangers and from the uh, Men of the West Rangers. Yeah. So, uh, quite a few different opportunities to get that off. But the problem um, is simple. Uh, you know, they have a great area here with the stage on the back with the double act, double buff action going on, you know. And then on the other side, the Elven player has also Haldir leadership, he's level 5. Again, he's getting really close to the Golden Arrow, which was actually the reason why they won, I think, the game number 2 it was. Uh, he has highly leveled Glorfindel on the field, um, who is gonna be really hard to take down with the Blade of Purity being available. And they are being pressured at the same time from both sides. And Erby was already going for the trebuchets, by the way. Luckily, the Snow Trolls, they will be able to take it down, but he's gonna lose every single Snow Troll after that one. That's really unlucky here. Oh, and yeah. Erby and is just getting... As well. Oh, points um, donated. Glorfindel, using Blade of Purity, just, like, solos the army of Ectelion, basically. And, uh, yeah, huge trade swinging in the favor of the Rise of the Witch King team. Um... And uh, it's looking, it's looking good for them. Uh, I have to say, in this uh, final game, um, they've got the Glorfindel on level four, Haldir uh, on level six, nearly getting that Golden Arrow. Um, yeah, it's looking good, Shanks. It's looking yeah. good. I don't know if they can come back from this. So technically, how it was, guys, the very first game in the series was won by the BFME two team, and then the Rise of the Witch King team was actually able to make it even again. The game number three was won by BFME two game uh, by BFME two team again, and since then every game, and this is also kind of including this game here, uh, is being won by dominated by the Rise of the Witch King team. Yeah, they just let the BFME two guys think that they could win, didn't Maybe, they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just give them enough at the start to think they can win, and then uh, yeah, suddenly we're seeing. But that has um, to be the most annoying thing, right, about the uh, Elvin Pikemen. If they can get stealthed around the trees, and if you don't yeah. pay attention, you won't be seeing them in time, and then you're gonna just run into them in the in the trees. And that was it's right. Great that was that, the case. It? 
so many trees, can't see them in there. Um, it's really hard to deal with, honestly. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, there was a nice, actually a long shot going down uh, on the left-hand side, killed two units and saved a mill um, for Ectelion. Um, but yeah, they're gonna need a few more long shots like that to get back into this game, I think. So in terms of command points, boys, we have 710 command points for the green Elvin player, Matthews. He has 13 power points collected after having Elvin Wood, Eel and Rallying Co. We have Exelion who has decent amount of power points, almost 14 after Orc Special Summon and the War Chance. He's only sitting on 575, which is not that terrible, I mean, considering the fact that he's being focused all the time from the Elvin player. Irby on the other side has <laughs> incredible 825 command points. He has Marketplace getting more and more money. He has level 3 barracks and he's spamming now the trebuchets and taking down this tower. On the other side, you know, the man of the last player Sauron is really behind in terms of power points, but also in terms of command points. So I don't see a coming back from the situation. They can't contest that. They can't go and take down those trebuchets without losing so many units. Especially the man of the last player Sauron can't do that because he doesn't have any melee units on the field for now. That's right. There's uh, Haldir level 8 now with that golden arrow. Oh. Um, even uh, Legolas coming out <laughs> as well for Maddie Smirks, who's just about picked up 15 ring points. Um, could be looking for the Ent summon uh, opportunity Beware. soon. And um, yeah, he's denying him, you see. He's denying him with those heroes around that, you know, Ectelion can't come to help his ally all the time. I mean, he can't do that because this Haldir and Glorfindel are blocking all the units. He was just using the Golden Arrow to stun the enemy units. The Mountain Giants are going to be ready. He's going to use the Orcs now for defensive purposes. Uh, the Giants, they're not going to do too much. I mean, they can be maybe used and try to take down those trebuchets. There are three trebuchets, so if they don't do anything about it, they will lose the game. But guys, on the bright side, ah, uh, never mind. Oh, that's unlucky. You know what, what happened? Arrow Volley is going to be available pretty soon. Maybe oh. going for the Felwind would be a better choice. Because he doesn't have Felwind, you know? Imagine this army if you use a Felwind right here, boys, and group all them, all of them together and then use Arrow Volley on top of that. Maybe that would oh. be the win condition from the Man of the West Engmar team. But a nice trample coming down with the Rohirrim. Oh, Rohirrim. Um, taking out all of those um, Galadrim warriors. Uh, actually, the Rohirrim should be able to clear up the entire force here because there's no more pikes. Um, so, uh, yeah, actually a really Ooh, nice... Firestone upgrade purges! Look the damage from those oh. trebuchets! Huge damage, man. Erovole is incoming. Nice, killing this... Oh, he was actually killing so much with that, but he lost all the Rohirrim also. <laughs> to his own arrow volley, guys. Wow, Erby just about holds on to the bind that he's got um, with the Lone Tower summon and the trebuchets. Uh, no more pikes, uh, hardly any more units uh, for him, but it doesn't matter because they're protected and these upgraded trebuchets are just Oh, look at this, man. They are actually dealing. So base. I'm actually curious about the damage I'll put on the fortress. Let's see. One. One, two, three. Let's see. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, I would expect a bit more damage because the structures, other structures are getting pretty much two-shotted. But it's just, it's a matter of time. He's gonna use the mountain giants now for defensive purposes, but they, can they do it? Can they do it in time? He's gonna be able to take down one of them. The Rohirrim, oh, they gotta wow. take them down really fast. We have end special summon in the back. What is going on? Absolute fiesta. <laughs> giants, what is happening, ends, Shanks? trebuchets. <laughs> Guys, Desperate defense from BFME2. They used the rebuild as well on the fortress. Um, and, uh, oh, a really nice golden arrow, stunning all the dark rangers. Uh, but he's got to take care of these Ents. They're just picking away at the fortress. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they're going to be able to hold on here, Shanks. It looks like the fort's going down. Bombadino! Oh, wow. And the fortress Sauron from Sauron gets the Bombadil summon been... up uh, before his fort goes down, right? Yeah. Sauron, Sauron Fortress has been taken down, boys, unfortunately. Um, yeah, hmm. I mean, the heroes here from the Alvin player were actually putting so much work. Look, Legolas also in the back, almost level 5 already. Haldir almost oh, wow. level 10. So, yeah. Wow, he's really well played. Uh, what do you think about Sauron uh, picking Men of the West, you know? <laughs> Sauron playing for men this time. Um, maybe Mordor next game <laughs> or something. 
Um, but, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, kind of <laughs> ironic, right? So your name is Sauron, but we play Man of the West, you know? <laughs> Maybe you wanna, yeah. he's losing on purpose, you know, so he can make men lose, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he's loyal to the end. I feel like wow. uh, the mistake was again at the beginning, and against good players like Irby, you don't want to make too many mistakes because they know how to snowball their leads and how to punish you for that. And you know, it was a mess from this situation when there was a statue and they, he couldn't leave this area anymore. We are talking about the blue man of the West player Sauron, by the way. That means not only it's like a win win situation for Irby, you know? Because not only he's putting a lot of pressure, taking down some structures and units, but also during this time he's being untouched all the time. I mean, he has literally 975 command points available, guys. That's crazy. He has a lot yeah. of farms untouched. We have three farms level 3. With the buff from the Grand Harvest. So he's getting so incredibly much resources. Yeah, your farms level up quicker as well with that Grand Harvest. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that means your population cap goes up even more. So, um, yeah, just a s super game from Irby. Um didn't really let Sauron breathe at all in the whole game. And uh, I have to say as well, uh, Matty's use of heroes uh, with the Glorfindel and the Legolas and the Haldir, um, putting on a great show here for Rise of the Witch King, guys. Yeah, and they all deserve the victory. I'm also curious what's going to happen with Solas and Irvi against them. I mean, again, I've never seen Sol Solas playing 2v2. Unlike this one time, he was not able to carry me against two Brutals. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, Brutal you know, maybe he can carry uh, um, Irby against two BFME2 uh, experts. Wow, Irby is just so good, isn't he? And Matty played great these last couple of games as well. Um, because uh, I think the first two games when Sauron was uh, getting the better of Matty, it was looking great for the BFME2 guys. Uh, but Matty uh, seems to be picking up. I think he was getting into the game. Yeah, Matty uh, has, a, a has a solid performance, you know. Every game he was doing always oh. good. This game he was really dominating and also last game, I mean, the last two, three games in which he just, you know, adapted to the gameplay from Ectelion. He knew what he's gonna yes. do because he doesn't change his gameplay, right? Ectelion always does the same thing, like five to six mils before he does anything else. So he was able to read that and, you know, punish him at the beginning and then just snowballs the lead, you know, just like in this game as oh, well. Oh yeah, definitely a great adaptation by Matty, a smart player. Going for the early barracks build and the quick rush. Um, this game with the creep and then the rush. But yeah, it's the same outcome. Uh, getting through that early game uh, with a lead. And uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, these guys are pros for a reason. Uh, I think Matty and Irby, both with, you know, close to 70% win rate in Clan Wars last month. Um, just showing exactly why uh, they're just so well respected in the community. And uh, yeah, taking this. Uh, final game as well uh, against the BFB2 pros. True. True. I think, guys, yeah. I'm, it's gonna be it for me today. We're gonna make a raid, big raid party to other. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you're watching that right now over at Twitch, please uh, make sure to follow the stream. We're gonna have more BFME 2 against Rise of the Witch King going on pretty soon. And if you're watching it over at YouTube, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more content like this, guys. Thanks for watching and see you very soon again.